Hello and welcome back to the finale of the 2013 Grimmies. This is our recap show uh, for those of you that want a little bit of different flavor of reliving all of our games of the year. Uh, I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined today by Cole Monroe. Hello. And the only opinions that matter. <laughs> finally. Finally, you get to weigh in. And uh, Josh Lee. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, hey, it's going good. Hello. Thanks for uh, being here, fellas. Um... So you guys helped us nominate and helped us vote for the awards, but you weren't actually able to participate in the awards show. So I don't even know of all these awards if you know who won what. Uh, so I figure you um, can kind of help out our ob- audience and react to our correct opinions and our bullshit opinions. So I'm just going to run through the categories, list off the finalists and winners, and you guys... <laughs> react along with me. I'll defend what I think is necessary, and uh, we'll recap, re- recap these Grimmies, starting with Best Brosif for your the war buddy of the year, the NPC that you just, that really took care of you, that you you, you trust more than anything. So, uh, our finalists were Ellie from The Last of Us, and Big Bro from Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, uh, with Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite winning this category. All right, you know, I will got to say, too, I actually did finally play and beat Brothers. Good. <laughs> prior to this conversation. <laughs> nice. So I, am, I was prepared for this. Uh, Brothers, Brothers jumped into my new category uh, along with The Walking Dead from last year and The Last of Us from this year. As, uh, I'm going to just create this new list that is called Fuck You Video Game. For putting me through what you're putting me through, but um, I was really I was really close with the brothers. Um, but uh, I think ultimately here we decided you know Elizabeth saves your life and helps you out and is never like um, never the escort and she also has some abilities that she can kind of take care of herself. So it kind of came down to uh, her and Ellie and uh, we sided with Elizabeth here. I mean, I'm just glad that the, the female persuasion was represented as strong in this category this year. Yeah, there was like there was no doubt that those were the two finalists. I think the right, uh, right. the the other one was uh, the the closer competition there. And they basically have the same name. Elliot is short for Elizabeth. Yeah, let's be yeah. honest. So it's about Elizabeth one. We thought about giving it giving it overall just to Ellen Page in general, uh, not for either of her characters this year, but um, that didn't that didn't come to fruition. So <coughs> I'm. I was torn on this one because Ellie was really, really good. Yeah. Like that character was awesome yeah. and was actually super helpful um, in less as, – as far as like the gameplay went, like Elizabeth would – she would – Disappear. What, throw, yeah. Yeah, and then she would like appear and throw you some ammo or, a, or whatever, you know. Shiny and, and, and like that, like, okay, that's – it's okay, whatever. But Ellie is like sneaking around, hitting people with bricks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think I voted for Ellie, but Elizabeth was awesome too. Yeah, it's hard not hard to get upset about that. So yeah, it can't be mad. Next up was uh, best guns, best item or tool used in video games this year. Uh, finalists were the pickaxe from Tomb Raider, uh, the pants from Gunpoint, and the winner. <laughs> Uh, was a skyhook from Bioshock Infinite. So, mainly for its dual uses, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. The zip lining's awesome, but the uh, almost unnecessary melee abilities of the, the uh, skyhook made it... It kind of gave it what I liked about the pickaxe, but it also did other stuff. <laughs> well, you know, the pickaxe was multi, uh, multi-use mm-hmm. tool as well. It helped you climb and uh, helped you... I guess it helped you tear- zipline, too. She, yeah, I guess she would use that. Yeah, tear Achilles and... Mm-hmm. Break skulls, so, but yeah, I got off problem Scott at all. Like that was iconic. Uh, that was yeah, especially that first time that face gets shredded. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy that the all of these nominees and winner are not guns. Yeah, that was uh, uh, we were on a roll here until uh, we got a, a couple of these name categories. Like best brosive goes to goes to a female. Best guns goes goes to a, not a gun. Um. Next up was best hype package. Doesn't really work the same way, but this was. I love that this is basically a marketing award now. This is the like trailers and marketing that that stood out to us, and um, the finalists were uh, Fez Two, 
and the everything to do with Metal Gear Solid Five, Phantom Pain, and uh, the uh, Ground Zeroes because they're impossible to sort out. But hey, the game's in my head now. Uh, but the winner was uh, Far Cry Three: Blood Dragon. So uh, we might have been the target demographic for that. This uh, was you guys did it wrong. What do we yeah. What do we miss? Yeah, I agree. What do we miss? Uh, well, my, I I thought that No Man's Sky, yeah, was probably that was. I mean, that was just crazy. Yeah, uh, that was a crazy, and the way it was revealed, you know, as like a here's this little, you know, in, little indie game or indie company doing like something huge, but th- th- that it was revealed on the whatever they call those awards now, VGXs, VGXs whatever. Yeah. Um, that was a huge surprise, and it looked awesome. And I watched that trailer like five times and got super pumped. Um, and uh, but I thought that um, like the the division um, trailer from E3 mm-hmm. was also just pretty pretty amazing as far as that. I mean that showed you know you, you know, like you see some gameplay, you see mm-hmm. the shootout, and the, you know and the little pullback thing which we've seen before. But that told me that I knew at the after watching that that I wanted to play that game, and I had mm-hmm. some kind of idea of what it was too, which was a pretty cool way to reveal a game. Yeah, yeah. I think those 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 were definitely uh, some of the ones we narrowed down. But um, me not being a Metal Gear Solid fan, I started kind of weighing in on that. Like, I'm really interested when they went all Red Dead Redemption with Metal, Metal Gear. Metal Gear, I am really interested to see how that game turns out. And then you couldn't stop the hype train for Blood Dragon. That was just like I said, we're the target demographic for that game. So that was a no brainer. And then we just got off on this conversation about you know. What's real and what's not real about the Fez 2 hype, like as far as that reveal trailer and then the immediate cancellation and all the drama around that. And um, and then, yeah, so we, we got upset at Phil Fish and then it just kind of stuck. So, <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> those other two could be swapped in there, but um, Fez 2 kind of stood out in our memory a little bit more. So, um, and yeah, we're all conspiracy theorists and we think the game's not actually canceled. So we could be proven wrong later. <laughs> Uh, best trucks with a Z. Uh, most fun you had with uh, vehicular uh, action this year. Uh, the finalists were the Jackdaw, from the boat from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, uh, the ATVs and trucks from Defiance. Uh, but the winner, I was actually like, yes, it should have won, but disappointed that a truck won. <laughs> and that the Euro Trucks from Euro Truck Simulator took home best trucks. <laughs> kind of hard to argue. Yeah. I, I actually believe it or not, I voted for the Defiance cars. Did you? Yeah, it, it got a stronger push because that's the only reason we played that game was to just goof around in those vehicles with friends. It there was every single time I got in that game, I would summon my car. I would get into situations uh, where you know you're trying to figure out kind of the combat puzzle. Like, oh, we have, like, a big boss here, or there's some guys holed up in a building, or I got to find some way up these stairs. And my answer was always, summon my big car. <laughs> and Not the, the Dodge Challenger, do though. Anywhere. Like, what? Not the Dodge Challenger, though. Um, yeah. You stuck, you stuck with the... Okay. <laughs> I always forgot that they, they yeah, wrote yeah, that the in Yeah, the Challenger. The, the apocalypse version of that. Um, it and I was, it was say- really fun to just ramp off crap in that. And you could blow up everything and you could just get into stupid situations where you could roll other people could get in like in the multiplayer could get in your car like that <laughs> they had a lot of stuff going for it a lot of fun sometimes the cars would be there but they really wouldn't be there i love the glitches around it because the, <laughs> the spirit of the ward is like the jankiness also associated with this stuff oh, they were real jank um which like i think if assassin's creed 4 had been completely tightened up and like there have been no issues with the boats um, the Jackdaw wouldn't even made the list, but it was like just the weird shit that would happen to some of these ships that uh, I think bumped that up. But um, but also, I don't know, when we did our 24-hour uh, live stream and you played a few hours of Euro Truck Simulator 2, when when Coop tagged in and became the, the trucker and pulled off like an amazing parking job, we were just like glued to the screen as he was <laughs> dropping off his load. And... Uh, <laughs> I think that was that was what kind of clinched the award for this one. I just wanted to use the word load and clinched that closely together. So, <laughs> um, 
But the first award that truly mattered, uh, best digital butt. Let's uh, recap the finalists here. Um, Rex Power Colt from Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Um, I did not realize uh, that there's a sex scene in that game. And uh, so screenshots from this scene elevated his uh, assets uh, uh, to to the finals here. Can you, can I get that? Let me look that up. Yeah, it's oh, it's very easy to Google image search. So um, enjoy. Um, uh, the other finalist uh, was uh, the brothers um, from Outlast. So those big, intimidating, oh, naked men yes, chasing you around uh, the prison section, I believe. So uh, yes. those guys were terrifying. But the winner of best digital butt is Laura Croft's hair. Because to be fair, she had a nice butt as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but her hair is getting yeah. a Game of the Year edition. The only mm-hmm. reason that's true. If Josh coined this one. I can't. I can't. I can't take credit for it. But um, the only reason we're getting Xbox One and PlayStation Four versions of Tomb Raider is so that consoles can finally get that glorious, glorious yeah. Tress effects. <laughs> well, also uh, apparently she needs a new face. So yeah, well, we yeah, was a little, did, it was a little dirty in the original. <laughs> yeah. Did we that, learn anything that, from Skyrim? Get that clean face mod going. <laughs> yeah, you wash up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have uh, I didn't have issues with her hair, um, like some people did with like I don't know if there was a did it run fine. Before. Yeah, I had, well, I turned off that. Oh yeah, That's yeah. Bullshit. It didn't for me. Yeah. That's not bullshit. That's why it won. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I try. I did it, and I was like, "Wow, that looks great!" And then turned yeah. it off yeah. immediately. <laughs> I thought about turning everything else off but her hair, just so I could enjoy yeah. it more. But um, raping tombs with a mop on top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, that was like our one of our more yo- unanimous selections, so that was kind of enjoyable. Um, I was hoping Dante was going to make the final list, but. Ah, that was. I think um, I was actually pushing more for a, that slice of pizza. That right. gets gets in the way. <laughs> that's a, that's what I picture in my yeah, head. Yeah. yeah. What an intro! What an intro! Uh, <laughs> and next up, I wrote this wrong. It's the more of these award, not the most of these award. That'd be that'd be something different. So this is trying to celebrate the middle tier games and um, uh, just the games that we want to see um, see more of because we're kind of ho- we're kind of fearful that this level of game is kind of going away. So it's a little bit of a gray area around what what games fall in this category, but we finalists we came up to or came up with was uh, Payday Two, uh, Call of War as Gunslinger, and then Far Cry Three Blood Dragon took home the award. So there's a lot of there's a lot of these little middle tier games, but um, with Payday Two we just really like the co op aspect in the in the setting of that game, and then um, I I became a pretty huge fan of Gunslinger and its storytelling style and just the kind of just no nonsense. Get in. Tell your story. Get out. Um, just, just really good budget price shooter experience. It was there was no flaws, no flaws, flaws or fluff around it. Um, but I think also shooters, uh, <laughs> traditionally the low budget ones are extra bad. Yeah, exactly. Like there was no reason to pay attention to this game, and I didn't until the end of the year when mm-hmm. it, people were still buzzing about it. So. Uh, but uh, but Blood Dragon, I mean, come on. You've got an amazing uh, engine and an amazing setup with Far Cry 3. And just, yeah, reskin this thing in a ridiculous fashion. That's But you know, get rid of that fucking boring-ass intro. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty... That, like the tutorial section is so... I haven't got past it because it's so boring. And some of their jokes, uh, that one in particular, f- kind of fall on their face. Like, they're trying to make fun of the tutorials, and they then they made one of the worst yeah. tutorials. But, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I would. I mean, I would rather have Blood Dragons than just like, you know, yearly releases or yearly improvements to, um, you know, staying within the world or like, doing a traditional expansion of Far Cry Three. Like this was yeah, like, yeah. out of nowhere and awesome. Yeah. Take take your game engine and whatnot, and then just create some new art assets and do <laughs> like make it a different game. Yeah. I, I wish uh, sports games did that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like you know, like let's I mean, give it give us like a cyber basketball game, you know. <laughs> we, Bill Lambeers, combat basketball. Yeah, and sure. Um, I and also just like the budget price of it too. Like that was just I don't know. It hit it hit a lot of new notes that we. 
I think we probably assumed the game industry wouldn't do. So that was a really nice surprise. Uh, the Date Night Award for uh, playing with your significant other. So it's got some co-op aspects, but, um, you know, um, also some date night aspects. So our finalists were Rayman Legends and Animal Crossing New Leaf. And uh, the winner was Gone Home. Uh, last year's winner was Diablo 3, which led itself to, like, you know, longer, repetitive play sessions. But we kind of got into this whole conversation about, uh, like, date night movie nights. And Gone Home kind of fits the bill for that. You just play that for a couple hours and experience it at the same time with somebody else. Um, which I thought was uh, uh, pretty interesting because I, I do I, – this is a game I want to show off to a lot of people. Yeah, I feel like what's gone home for me, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I mentioned this in my game of the year list is this one of the few games that I just like w- went to my wife and said, she hasn't played it yet, but I went to her and said, you need to play this. Like, this is your type of game. You like point and click. Like, you need to follow this story. And, uh, it, and that doesn't happen a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but can I say one thing? Yeah. And I've, I've noticed this about a few of the awards coming up. <laughs> yeah. There's no fucking way. Animal Crossing New Leaf is on any of these lists without you and Eric <laughs> just, playing cards for just a, just a blanket statement that there's no way that this makes Fuck anything. That. It is not a date night award. Yeah, it is. You <laughs> do no, it. It's... No. The significant <laughs> other is probably going to break up with you if you present that game to her. <laughs> or him. Like, it what doesn't the fuck mean is Mario, this? Super Mario 3D World on this list. Like that that's dumb. Oh, we were right, exactly. We we had we had issues with Mario 3D World's co-op at some point. So uh, <laughs> Okay, so the argument for Animal Crossing. Co-op in Animal Crossing, great. Yeah, you're you're both yeah, taking exactly. care of your you're both taking care of your town. It's like you're doing you're doing your chores. You've got daily it's, daily activities. It's yeah, relaxing. Your chores, like it, oh. Yeah, hey, hey, um, hey, honey, can you go uh, clean my town of all the weeds? Um, because you're doing a terrible job of it at our real house. But if it's your town, if it's together, it's your town. <laughs> oh, th- yeah, that's bad. Also, Marvel Heroes. <laughs> no, didn't happen. <laughs> it lost its. Uh, if, if Diablo three could win this award, Marvel its supporters Heroes were quiet too because it's better than Diablo three. <laughs> we, it's not. It's Lego successful. Marvel should have been on here. Yeah, that yeah that game too. It's possible. really really fun. Oh, contentiousness! I like it. Um, moving on to the quickie. Also Starbound was better than th- those <laughs> games. Did not like that one. I'll, I'll note that your your date nights are very different than everybody else's. No. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't, I mean, I'm, I I don't know about you guys. I'm actually having a lot of gaming date nights mm-hmm. and. None of them involve the games on your guys' uh, final list. Well, what, what do you think about what do you think about Gone Home? <clears throat> I had a different experience with that. Okay. Uh, part, you know, if it was on, if it was actually e- more easily playable, like, can you use a controller with that? Because I don't if know. you can't do it like on the couch, yeah, and if it, for like a non-multiplayer game, mm-hmm. then I think that already kind of, to me, kind of disqualifies it personally. But then, but then also. Uh, I, to, to, sometimes, like really get into a story like that requires me to shut everything else out. Sure. Um, like, like do that with like horror games and movies. Mm-hmm. Best experiences are when I'm by myself. This game, I thought it was going to be a horror game kind. Of, so yeah. that, getting into that part of it was um, kind of relied on me playing it by myself. So mm. fair enough. Well, I would suggest it to everyone or to you know to significant others everywhere i still i don't i wouldn't want to uh, experience it at the same time oh yeah yeah with the control the control side it, it was kind of a one one person might be more comfortable doing the controls while the other person is kind of directing them what to do and feeling engaged in that in that regard i mean you're so. gonna crowd around a desk that's not necessarily a good time <laughs> oh you there's there are ways there are ways um i don't remember how like the quickie award follows up the date night award, but that always uh, makes me laugh. But the quickie awards for that fifteen minute, <laughs> that fifteen minute game. So the the game you take a break with. So um, finalists are um, Animal Crossing: New Leaf, uh, Rogue Legacy, and uh, Desktop Dungeons was our winner. So uh, I, I I did not play Desktop Dungeons, so I I can't argue for or against it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me either. But fucking Rogue Legacy yeah. is amazing. 
I think it only lost points because some of the later runs you have to spend you have to spend some time with it rather than desktop dungeons seem to consist consistently kick your ass in fifteen minutes or less, uh, but also st- still be addictive. So and then you know my feelings about Animal Crossing. Hey, hey, for let's go do some chores. You have personal <laughs> you have personal feelings, but <laughs> Animal Crossing was it was a uh, it was a bigger deal this year than than I expected. So and that's yeah for two people on the site for t- <laughs> not. Did you see the internet? If it, if, it, if I felt it was limited to <laughs> did, what the fuck is the internet? <laughs> I mean, I would understand an anti Tom Nook agenda here, but this whole anti Animal Crossing thing is. Uh, um, it's one of the I, I did. I didn't understand the 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 layers that it had. So, so you're you're choosing awards based on what the internet says? <laughs> no, there's is that some, what your argument is. <laughs> no, my validation is that it was popular enough outside of realizing that the two of us that really enjoyed this game uh, may have been a minority in our crew, but that we had backup elsewhere, so we weren't crazy. It was kind of weird to me that it beat <coughs> Nuclear Throne. I thought we had enough people that probably liked that game. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, definitely definitely talked about, but it's like... I think we've taken more of a wait-and-see uh, aspect with Nuclear Throne, like, right right yeah. now. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. If it was a little further along... There's, a, like... Um, Risk of but Rain... it's fun now. Yeah. Risk of Rain, Nuclear Throne, Rogue Legacy, those those three, like, butted heads against each other a lot. And it was almost like whoever survived of the three. Um, and then we went, like, almost changed the conversation around the other the other finalists. But, uh, <coughs> but def- yeah, definitely... Risk of Rain's real interesting. And for me, it would be... Because I, I like this list. And I like the I like the 15-minute, the little quickie mm-hmm. game. Um, Spelunky, Vita... Is oh, yeah. one of those yeah. that'd be on there for me, but it's I also have have a hard time pushing for that since Spelunky came out. Yeah, it won war I, on other platforms last year, but um, I, Risk of Rain would be on the list for me if it was actually fun to play. <laughs> you, <laughs> I like Risk of Rain because I like everything about it except the actual like the combat the, stuff, the, the shooting, slog. And, the, yeah. and how bad it's just it's not good. I like it, but that one is promising if that changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I haven't played desktop dungeons either, so I can't really. Get I, yeah, that that one that one hooked me, and uh, Ethan is a a huge supporter of that game, so that's where it got his its big push. So, uh, part two of the awards, uh, we split all these up into like our sections of eight here, and uh, next up is the BFG award, which is our overachiever of the award, uh, the overachiever of the year uh, for a game that like you know if you cut like major content from it it would still be as good as it is it just went above and beyond and in, in, in certain regards and our uh, finalists were uh nino cooney uh wrath of the white witch and brothers a tale of two sons uh but the winner um even though i tried to campaign hard against this game offline um uh, from even mentioning it on the show i will not hide my agenda but grand theft auto 5 was our bfg award winner just from the super, the all the extra content in this game, all the other things hidden in the world, all the little the little touches, um, you really couldn't deny that Rockstar Rockstar it, and um, you know it's kind of those little things that I think we'll be talking about for a while with this game. Mm. What else jumps out, Josh? What else? What is what isn't on this list that you wanted to fight for? Well, uh, on our voting, I'm yeah. pretty sure I put in a vote for the Lego Marvel Super Heroes game. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was way better, way more fun than a than a series that has had that many entries that are all so similar. Yep. Should ha- you know have any right to be that? I thought that should have been that was close. Uh, up the, on the list because I mean we all were talking about this Lego game mm-hmm. that I mean, no, those games are all fine, but they hadn't really changed that much. Yeah. Um, this was the Lego game to end really, all Lego really games at this right point. On this one, they just went over the top. It was so good. Yep. Uh, That's fair. Yeah, I know that. Like, I thought, like, maybe I looked at the category a little differently, but I thought about like what you know, what I, what I, what I, what did I expect going in, and then how much better was it than those, than those I mean, expectations? We, what we and usually go with, I'd say we usually best. go with more bombastic type of games than uh, seeing Nino Cooney and Brothers, but just like 
I don't know, the attention to detail of the art style of Nino Kuni and just like even even being involved with Studio Ghibli, like that was just for a random JRPG seemed above the call of duty uh, type of thing. And then uh, with Brothers, it was just <laughs> how tight of an experience it was, how fully realized the world was, how well the story, like it just could have been a throwaway game. And um, the fact that it had the impact that it did uh, was really surprising. Yeah, to me, that Brothers was the runaway in this category. Oh, wow. I don't know how Grand Theft Auto is even on the list because I expected all of those things out of GTA. Yeah. Um, but I don't yeah, think like, any well, of If Grand Theft Auto is on this list, why is the Saints Row on this list? You know? like, uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Saints Row 4, uh, you know, more than maybe it was at. Like, you thought, like, oh, this is going to be. I don't know. I don't, I don't think either of those games are absolutely amazing. I don't think so either. But I think. You know, but overachieving. Right. I don't think it's overachieving. Gotcha. GTA, oh. anyway. Ah, just like the the little stuff, like the you know, one of the commenters mentioned just switching when you switch between characters and you just jump in and you that that character has, you know, you, you try to figure out what the hell he's been up to, like just those little things and. Um, yeah, I mean, it does definitely do interesting things with. And the, just all the little touches about tying into you know actual Los Angeles and. The hidden things and that just that stuff just started to add up. It just like and then if you cut all of that, the game is almost like as far as like quality wise, like it it still almost remains the same. It's just like it's things I view as almost superfluous. Like Rockstar didn't even need to do that, but they continued to do that. So uh, that's why I took home the award anyway. So oh man, you guys are you guys are getting frustrated? How about the comeback award um, for basically the franchise saver? Um, whether or not, uh, depending how in trouble you thought the franchise was. But our finalists were uh, DMC Devil May Cry, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, and the winner uh, was Tomb Raider. Um, and, um, yeah, all of these, like, I'm trying to think. All of these are probably getting sequels, except for, I don't know if Devil, I'll be curious to see if they revisit Devil May Cry very soon. Um, but, um, you know, Assassin's Creed 4 kind of saved the franchise for me. Um, but, uh, Tomb Raider just, uh, had a bigger impact than I think we expected. And that, that franchise was definitely needed a, needed a reboot. And I think they accomplished what they needed to with it. And, um, I cannot, like, as far as sequels go, that's the one I'm most excited for. I want to see what they do, they do from here. I don't have a, I don't have any problem with this category, (laughs) honestly. Nice. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, Tomb Raider... It was my game of the year, so obviously I think it was a great game. It deserves a comeback award, but... You'll be happy to know uh, Animal Crossing didn't receive any votes or nominations for this section. It's so. good. Thank God. I, th- I think Tomb Raider was deserving of this. Cool. Uh, DMC also... Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, yeah, yeah, either one. Either one, I think, could have won that shit. Yeah, but I also want to say that I think in AC4, you know, sure, but I think Zelda... A Link Between Worlds should have been it, on this, you know, it yeah. should have been up there. <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think that, that was an oversight, was actually. Video game, video game yeah. of you know yeah. of the year. So right. yeah. there's still a lot of there's still a lot of people on the Zelda side just saying, oh, it's still it's still just another Zelda. They're gonna make another Zelda, and it wasn't all that different. But like, I I I totally see where you're coming from. But uh, for some reason, that didn't that didn't jump out to me to nominate it as uh, compared to some of these. But definitely that definitely a valid option. I think that is a Way, way better entry in the series than the last <laughs> several have. Been. I've been saying since Wind Waker. I've said it's the best Zelda since Wind Waker. Um, and yeah. then, and if you didn't like Wind Waker, then you go, you go even further back. So, uh, sure, yeah, at least. Best Zelda. Next up, the best renamed category of the year, uh, the horror moment of the year. <laughs> was mm. I think it was the Shock and Ah Award last? That was yeah, it was we struggled so. Horror moment of the year. Um, uh, the finalists were the hallucinations in Dead Space Three, um, and the the sewer scene, the big open water area in Outlast, and just the winner was just the entire setup for One Late Night. Uh, basically, we hit this wall where none of us really wanted to play this game because it could actually affect our day to day life. The whole setting of <laughs> You know, supernatural occurrences in an office building when you're working there, 
late at night, which is very, very common. I'm not going to be, you know, the argument I used was I'm not going to be out in space, you know, anytime soon, or I'm not going to choose to go into an insane asylum that is halfway abandoned and weird shit's going on. But I do have to work late. You're there, but you're not going to choose. I do have to work late in the office, and I can't kind of psych myself out. And from what I played a one late night, I wanted nothing to do with it. I, that's that was, I was totally okay <laughs> with that one on the list. But then also, though, I had voted for the Last of Us, uh, the restaurant scene. See, okay, so that was that was the debate. Was I think it was kind of split down the middle. The people that had actually played that scene, I played it as an action scene and didn't like. It's more of like kind of the slasher horror for sure, but mm-hmm. two of us didn't have an issue like even getting through that scene, and the two of us struggled and were fighting for the more horror side. So it was just kind of a that didn't strike the horror chord with me. It was just, um, but it's kind of like that whole game. You know, it doesn't come across as a zombie game most of the time either, but but in essence it is. So uh, well, that ever, actually, I think that that character, like the, the, uh, David, oh boy. Um, <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, Nolan North. Yeah. Right. So I did not believe he, that. I thought, I thought he did a really good job, but that that character was started out when you meet him, you think kind of creepy, and then you go, well, okay, actually, maybe he's kind of an okay guy, and then you have a couple of scenes like the one in the cell, and yeah, things just yeah. kind of go really downhill, and then yeah. it just escalates, and that character gets, to, you know, has a short little arc. Which I thought was very effective, and when oh, you get man. to the restaurant, he's just like, "Here's this murderous, crazy bastard." And he also had like that. The ending scene in the restaurant was very, very good yes, as well. So. Yes, that uh, yeah, I thought that was I that guess, entire. I, guess I was thinking about the whole arc maybe in that moment, and if you don't take the whole thing into consideration, it's maybe not as not still. Like I, I would, I nominate like that entire winter scene, like for kind of moment of the year, like that, because mm-hmm. I thought I knew what that game was. And like was kind of in a in a groove with playing it, and then, man, winter hit, and holy shit! So, um, did, were there any other nominees that didn't didn't make it for you, Cole? Or did you notice anything? I don't play horror games because I'm a pussy. So. Okay, fair enough. Uh, moving on, <laughs> moving on to the Infinite Lives Award. This uh, originally was the um, the game from last year, from 2012, um, that we played a lot in 2013, where I had the most support. And uh, the funny thing about this 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 category was some 20, uh, 2011 games are still hanging around. But uh, our finalists were uh, Spelunky because uh, we played the hell out of that game, and but was technically released in the year before, and that Vita version was awesome. Um, then Skyrim from twenty eleven could not deny like the amount of my friends that were playing this game. Not just our, our horrible night crew, but people still going back into Skyrim. Um, was kind of surprising. Plus, I had the Dragon Board DLC this year, uh, but the the winner was Borderlands Two, just from the sheer flood of content this year. Um, uh, some better than others, uh, some really good, but uh, uh, the support of Borderlands Two is still pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty fine with this list. Like, I don't remember, I don't know who was the nominations, but um, one game that jumps out that's not on here is Planet Side Two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kinda, still going pretty strong. I, I kind of dropped off of it, but I really enjoyed playing it. Josh, play. have you played that since they <laughs> like they they spit out that uh like the optimization pack or whatever? Yeah, no, I I haven't. Um, although I did, I updated it recently, but okay. uh, it was uh it's been on my list. I've been thinking about playing it, but I wanted to kind of get through some of the backlog sure. of things for this year first, you know, so I could have these conversations and. You know, kind of while it's still, some of those are still fresh, and mm-hmm. um, but I played it this this year, just not since that patch. But it, that game just keeps getting better and better, awesome. and it's just I still think it's an amazing achievement, tech, you know, technological achievement. Yeah. Um, but I also play Lost Skyrim mm-hmm. this year, <laughs> and and then also but did you uh, did you, did you? On the list because that's like. That should get like the foot in the mouth of war because I talked a lot of shit about that yeah, last year. <laughs> and then I played the Vita version a bunch, and it's really good. Did so, you go back to Skyrim because of the DLC, or just because oh, I want to? I'll play some Skyrim. Both. Yeah, it was. Just... I mean, well, I, yeah, I, I wanted to. I, I just all I constantly get hankerings for, like I want to play some Skyrim today yeah. because I feel like going into a fantasy world and getting sucked into it. And there's no more immersive world to me than that one, and that's. 
Yeah. Um, I just love going in there and just, I mean, I like roaming the countryside. I, the dungeons and stuff are fine, but, you know, the dragon fights are great and just seeing, like, a, some of the nice vistas, you know, there's a lot of reasons I go. It's it's my zen place that I yeah. like to go to. And then I uh, fired up the Dragonborn DLC and that just morrowind comes rushing back and hitting you in the face they even have the music in there it's like that was pretty cool you still got some more morrowind on your chin there yeah yeah um but yeah borderlands 2 um that was the game we kept trying to uh push through it cole but uh um i don't see that game slowing down anytime soon either so um that that's that's gonna be a contention next year as well We'll see. Um, I think there's going to be other games maybe in that category that make you stop playing Borderlands. We'll sure. See. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. We'll get to that shortly. But first, uh, the Mr. Dave Award for Best New Character. Uh, nominees, or our finalists, uh, were the narrator uh, from <coughs> The Stanley Parable. Uh, the Stanley Parable. And then uh, the little bro from Brothers of Tale of Two Sons. Uh, the winner mm. was Richard Conway from Gunpoint. Um, again, this was a... Uh, I didn't get to see his full character arc, but uh, Ethan kind of sold me on this. And just, I mean, the ri- the writing behind Gunpoint and the uh, the wittiness of Conway from the start um, uh, kind of drew me in. And it's kind of funny that, that we connected with this world as much as we did, considering, you know, it's kind of like... You know, it's pixel art style. Sometimes that's a that's a bigger leap that the characters don't jump out uh, quite like they used to. But uh, Conway, uh, we want to we wanna do some more uh, spying with him uh, very soon. Really excellent writing. In that it's game. ridiculous. Really good. Really good. Really good. Like, it, I mean, it, it sounds kind of generic to compliment it just because of uh, Tom Francis' background. But, I mean, it, it, it floored me immediately. Like, just, it, it really grabbed my attention. Um... And I played a lot of those puzzle platformers, but this thing was just like it was so cool. And then and and then the character, I don't know, just you know the whole setup of trying to clear your clear your name, but working with both sides that are the ones that are trying to frame you and the ones that are working against each other and just playing playing them against each other. Um, it was just it was it was really fun. I really like related to the character too. So very awesome. I thought this this category was really tough for me looking at I'm again I'm looking at all the nom- nominations right now and I'm I remember now the feelings I went through of like oh my gosh these were so so good I think I think Joel Last of Us that was the best performance yeah, yeah. of the year for sure but they, you know that it, one the, and Troy Baker just knocked it out of the park um, Troy Baker of the year for sure yeah Troy, yeah he, <laughs> he had a he had a hell of a year but then um, I also maybe my favorite character most entertaining character of the year was uh george what was it georgie how oh his name? from papers please Gustavo, Gustavo. Yeah. Uh, from papers please the guy who was always faking his papers yeah coming yeah. back it was, that was the funniest it was so it was so amazing yeah and like i think I, if i remember right you eventually get to like after like 15 times of seeing him a bunch of crap happens and then you can finally get to let him through yeah and he he like can kind of he kind of helps you out in the end as well if you if you depending on which ending you're on after uh but mm-hmm. he can he can help you out and it's yeah that uh definitely a definitely memorable one uh, yeah. is this is this for could it be like you but that guy you're not playing as but so could it technically be npcs as well yeah yeah, yeah sure. i really like the loot tests from NPCs. yeah they were they, they were, were super entertaining they were they were strong i think they were yeah. one of the last ones we cut um and um uh, and then, like, we had trouble separating Joel from Ellie. Like, they, like, that, it's it's so weird. Like, you look at the story and the and the characters of The Last of Us, and they're all so integrated together. Like, pulling out one over the other is kind of kind of difficult. But, um, I, I don't, I don't buy that. I think that has to do with playing the game earlier in the year. Really? Like, well, I finished it later. Recently, in the year. you wouldn't have that. I finished it later in the year. So, uh, well, you, well, you also had, a, you took a hundred breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I did. I, I split it like fifty fifty, so fifty percent in the summer and fifty percent right towards the end. But, but I think I mean I connected with Joel like he was man. When I didn't know what what was going on with Joel, I was just I was distraught. <laughs> I was just like, would you please close this loop? Let me know. Oh man. 
And then your mm-hmm. your comment early in the year, I think right after you finished it, of if you don't like The Last of Us, you're a bad dad. Like that just <laughs> that just really yeah. resonated with me. So um, the not entertained award for underachiever of the year is up next. And <laughs> Josh is not gonna like this one. Uh, the uh, finalists are uh, Marvel heroes and Aliens <laughs> Colonial Marines. Why? And our winner uh, was Sim City. So, um, so Marvel Heroes, I th- your your opponents here are are myself and Ethan, in that we didn't have fun with this game when we played it, and could care understand. less about yeah. it at this point. I, so. don't, uh, I, I don't I don't get what I was bored. What it was? Like, I mean, what were you expecting going in? What? How did it not meet those <gasps> expectations? It's just I don't know I don't know maybe maybe we were action RPG'd out but it was just it was just flat it was just flat and uh, I don't know and it, and and I think the some of the pricing model around like getting to the characters I wanted was intimidating and stupid and I don't know it just it uh, we we it, <laughs> we both were not entertained by this game and really wanted to be we the, it had all the setup to be an awesome awesome experience but just it I mean, left a bad taste in my mouth for the entire year so i'll give you that the game has got like i thought the game was really good when it came out yeah but i but i also will recognize that it's gotten even like a lot i've heard i've heard good then. things since then so but i mean they've they've changed so much around and the way you can earn mm-hmm. new heroes there's a it's it's a lot easier to do so now um like the, those the <laughs> the starting characters are way better now. You can choose from like ten, oh, and nice. they're way more interesting than I think than the original start. I don't oh, yeah. think like a lot of people really gave a shit about Hawkeye and the Thing and yeah. Scarlet Witch. <laughs> like I said, just bad foot, bad foot forward, and you know I get I I put in four to six hours, but just just like I don't know. I was drawn to Path of Exile. There, I wanted to go back and play Torchlight or Diablo three. Like, and it just it just never hooked me. It was boring. It was flat, and it should have been awesome. That's all I could come I put, back to. So, I but, put over hundred hours in that game this year. <laughs> Between and you know, like, it's, I to me it's crazy because that's one of my. It, I played like it more than any other game. Is yeah. the one I keep going back to on a, you know, almost daily basis. If it makes you feel better, so, the real battle was between aliens and SimCity, and what it came down to was, what were really what were your expectations for either of these games? And SimCity had the much higher expectations and fell on its face a lot harder. Uh, but when's the last time we played a good Aliens game was what we kind of decided on. So mm. um, I still, I bought SimCity, never played it. Like <laughs> it was just, it was so broken. I tried to play it that, that first week and um, it's so broken. And then everything I was hearing about, it, I was like, that doesn't even like, even if you fix all this stuff, it doesn't sound like the SimCity that I want to play is in there. So that was embarrassing. They really, they really messed up with that launch and, yeah. and the whole. But hey, they turned Cheetah Speed back on this hey, month. Now you can play it offline. Yeah. That, that I cannot believe <laughs> that is happening. Well, like, just Like nine months later, I think. Just stick to your guns. Like I, I <laughs> would respect them more if they just said, like, no. Or, or, or if it just had turned out that they weren't full of shit in the beginning or, or whatever. I and mean, there was just poor choices that people didn't like. You know, the tying all that st- online stuff together, making it like let's give you, make people have smaller cities mm-hmm. <laughs> to force them into the online component. That to me was a just a bad decision from the get go, and they yeah. weren't going to fix that. It was pretty amazing. It was pretty like it seemed like a surefire. Like how do you screw up SimCity uh, going into that? And well, we have a blueprint for that now. So um, I, w- I want to say one thing on Aliens. Okay, I almost. I actually had nominated this originally for the hype package. Yeah. And I almost voted for it there. Mm -hmm. Tying into this award because I actually was super pumped about that game with all the stuff leading up to it and the footage they showed, the gameplay footage. And I thought I was really convinced that I, whether it was a great game or not, I was going to really enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. Because of my very deep love for aliens, this is canon, and, man. Oh my God, was it unbelievably bad? 
and 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 just it was pretty amazing how more like SimCity, it was you know, there was broken and there was a you know maybe it wasn't fun or whatever. It had it had a bunch of issues, but it was, there was probably actually like a bunch of good parts of a good game inside of that. And you kind of probably knew what you were getting into going in to some degree. Uh, with aliens, like the entire first level that got you pumped to begin with was different. Like in the when, like when you go to play it and you're like, what the hell? And you look at the compare side by side comparison and like the graphics are way worse. Like how, like how in the hell does the game get downgraded? Is for in so many ways <laughs> from a version you showed earlier, and then like you went back and remade a bunch of the game to be worse than it was. That was. That was mind blowing. I'd never seen anything like that. A game get worse at towards launch, like actively trying to make the game bad. <laughs> I know that's not like what was happening, probably, but no, that, that was, was probably bad. that was the plan. Yeah, that was I, that was a Pitchford just wanted to see how good he was at his hype machine He's, job, um, and th- and th- this game put that guy <laughs> on my shit list. Yeah, like, I will oh, never man. believe anything that comes out of his mouth ever yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, were there anything you were looking at the nominees, Josh? Was there anything else that what what would you have bumped Marvel Heroes off for? X Rebirth. Okay. I'm no nobody else played that game, so yeah. I wouldn't have had any traction there. But um, that one, that was like the X series, been around a long time. Mm-hmm. You guys have probably seen it on Steam sales. Yeah. So what is that? All right, that, I'm moving on. <laughs> you know that, uh, that that one was uh, I was kind of pumped for that. It was the idea was. It, th- those games are are these really big uh, open space simulations, really good graphics, uh, r- kind of a you could play it as like a privateer kind of game or a little more combat based, you know, not quite free space, but you know that kind of idea, mm-hmm. big capital ship fights and stuff. And this this game was th- them actually making a new game for the first time in many years. They just did a lot of expansion stuff for the last one. Look, the graphics looked amazing, and the gameplay was the idea was they're going to focus a little bit more to be easier for an average person to get in and blow some stuff up and whatever. And the, that sounded great because that game was too hard originally, the X3 game. And this game is so bad. <laughs> so bad. It's broken and, too, right? It, yeah, well, and it was. It, a lot of it was wonky, and it ran like total shit. And the like the characters and all the stuff they try to do, like it just everything they added to the game to me was just pure garbage. And I was so disappointed <laughs> by this game and, you know, I mean, they'll, they'll clean up some of that stuff. Yeah. But just uh, call it, I, that, I won't play that game again. Just call it early no. access. That's how you solve that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not a commentary. Um, moving on to the queued up award. This is the uh, game for 2013 that we foresee playing the most in 2014. Uh, the finalists were Payday 2 and Sir You Are Being Hunted. And the winner was Starbound, which I can get behind as someone that I haven't really got roped into Minecraft all that much. I did I did have a brief Terraria uh phase this this year but i held it off because a new starbound was coming played um a few weekends of of the early access here and i cannot wait for this game to come out because uh, i'm ready i'm ready to dive in uh feet first on this that was my pick <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I don't know why i bought it um but just because i'm not a fan of games like that but it looked really interesting to me in terms of like going to different planets and yeah, it's that's that's. So it just seems more interesting than a Minecraft or even a Terraria did. I mean that that so, the planet stuff is just like, you know, I haven't hit the point where, I, and I know each planet has like certain, you know, certain resources that it 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 focuses in, but I could literally like just play Terraria on one planet, but at least having the option of, if I'm bored with this section, I can just completely go to a new a new planet is really. I don't know. It just seems kind of endless to me. So, and then playing with friends and all the the other aspects there. And then I wanted to give a nod to Sir, you're being hunted. Like we give out an early access beta award, and and this wasn't in there. Be, but like as far as like the early access game that I just got a taste of and said, "Yep, I'm coming back to you when you're done." That was uh, I lo- I loved all I played of Sir, you're being hunted. I think it's a really interesting game, and I can't wait to see that that finished product. So that that's kind of where that was coming from. 
and then Payday 2 as far as, um, you know, four-player game, the the co-op game that uh, we can get friends together and play with online. I've had a number of good sessions with that and hope to revisit that again this year. I thought I thought DayZ would get on this list. Really? It's a little surprising. Yeah. I, I, I guess, I don't know. Um, I Those games have kind of fallen out of favor with me. I, a combination of our charity event the year before with the war z of just i don't know um how how our how ethan got gunned down there in, in the end was uh <laughs> i was just like yeah, unless i'm playing with friends i could definitely play daisy with friends but just mm-hmm. like going out there on my own um i'd rather play state of decay at this point like as far as um that kind of more open world zombie experience and uh um rather than i don't know i could get in the mood for daisy but it didn't stand out so um, the last ba- last award from this second batch here, uh, the Fuck Me Award, uh, for a challenging game that we enjoyed the most. How about that? That's a nice way to put that, right? Um, the finalists were uh, Risk of Rain and Desktop Dungeons, and the winner was Tiny Barbarian DX, uh, which is kind of interesting because you look at um, anything like I- any of the roguelikes out there, they kind of have that endless replayability. Um, and they're also known for being hard. Um, so the desktop dungeons and risk rains kind of stand out there, but tiny barbarian is just your traditional action retro platformer with a very defined beginning and end, but it's mechanics are just so tight that it also has that ability of when you're doing well, it, it's exciting. And you just really feel like, you know, I used to talk about the difference between completing a game and conquering a game and tiny barbarian just fed into that and uh, really hit hit home with a lot of us this year. Yeah, the flying uh, flying enemies <laughs> are assholes in every game. I'm actually kind of um, kind of surprised to see Rogue Legacy not on this list too. Just yeah. just because there were times where yeah, there were times where you can just blaze through it, but also sometimes you die for some bullshit reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's almost like it almost was hurt because. I don't know. There was an aspect of that game like you you so expected to die that the deaths weren't didn't feel as punishing. You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. And yeah. I think uh, at least in this category, it kind of lost. I'm just guessing as to why we kind of pushed it aside, but it was it was in consideration. But um, I think Risk of Rain got the points there for when you're having a really good run and you have a lot of awesome uh, abilities that that failure just hits hits a lot harder. Um, even though I know Josh, you don't like the gameplay risk rain. So I hope you like the music, though. <laughs> yeah, music's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> but Rogue, Rogue Legacy would take this category for me. Yeah, cool. Oh, you would you would like say the winner, not just a not just a finalist. No, I, that that was absolutely. Right. I mean, I think Rogue Legacy was was one of the more interesting games of of the year. Sure. Like the, sort of, the best, uh, the sub, probably like the maybe the tightest controls, uh, that gameplay loop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one know, more run, man. Up, the roguelike stuff, but then the, how each one ties into each other and the ability to lock down the previous dungeon in, you know, the, the trade off that comes with that and all that. that. And there was, but with the real sense of progression, like it, everything just clicked on, you know, it all came together Yeah, with that game, and, and it, the, for, I don't know, you guys, maybe you're just really good at that game or something, but I <laughs> thought that game was super hard. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah. Really hard. It gets there. Um, like, just the first couple of hours of that game until you get built up at all. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, you're just dying left and right. <laughs> but it's, it's so, but I, but I, it's so but, frustrating sometimes. Oh, but yeah, I guess I never hit that I think that's why it was out of out of mind for me. It just never hit that frustration level. I was I was enjoying myself too much to like put it in the the fuck me category. I mean, I was I was pissed off. I've been pissed off at Risk of Rain. I've been really pissed off at Tiny Barbarian. But I'm also pissed off at myself because I just like I can't do the thing to to win. Uh, although mm. Risk of Rain just like overwhelms you. So, uh, but Tiny Barbarian, it was like I can see what I need to do. I just am not skillful enough to pull that off sometimes. So, um, next up the tingle award for worst character uh he almost made the finals this year i almost let wind waker hd become considered for it just to get him nominated but ultimately our finalists were uh john carver from dead space 3 the co-op the co-op guy um and then 
everyone from the cast of Aliens Colonial Marines. Uh, just a broad swath there. Um, but the winner was Dr. James Whitman from Tomb Raider. I just hated every moment he was on screen. And, yeah. um, you know, this isn't like most evil character. It was just, uh, like he almost detracted from the experience, but at the same time, uh, there's some satisfying moments around it. But I just like, from the moment you, you meet him, you're just like, this is just a, a shady dude. And I thought he had like, as far as like the performance goes, he was like easily the worst uh, out of the ma- the major characters and just he's the thing I hate about that game <laughs> yeah I don't disagree like that was my I think I nominated him as well um, he oh god it was it was too obvious <laughs> yeah. where that character was going I yeah. think from the beginning yeah that too and and just smarmy slimy like I don't like Maybe that part was well written, but uh, like it's just kind of like well, he was kind of um, well, not necessarily a mentor to Laura, uh, but like he was. But he was like her boss or something, right? Like kind of yeah. Like he he was he hired her to like do the exploration, and he was yeah credit for it. Yeah, it's just like she never would have bought into that. Like if he was always that way, like it's not like he got to this island was all of a sudden kind of a, a self-centered asshole. It, right. Like, I don't think he can get this crew together. <laughs> so if there was exactly. a place for the plot to break, it was all centered around him. Um, and yeah, it was funny. Like, John Carver, like, I hate the idea of co-op in Dead Space. And then they, the character they create around it seemed to be pretty repulsive as well. Um, and then, um, do you want to say anything to the cast of like, Aliens, Colony Marines, Josh? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's. I wasn't particularly offended by any right. one performance. Um, I mean, the I like some of the um, then some of the bugs, like where the aliens would do their little uh, high step dancing and stuff like that. <laughs> that was some good moments. But yeah, the, this, as far as the story, it was you know whatever. The, I, I thought I thought Tiny Tina should be on the list. You hate the Tiny Tina, man. Comes up. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm unoffended by Tiny Tina. Worst character in video games. <laughs> <laughs> the game against humanity, uh, the game where we enjoy doing the most heinous things. Um, nominees were, or finalists were Bioshock Infinite and Tomb Raider. Um, and then the winner was Saints Row 4, which I had to be talked into uh, because the whole game's a simulation. Um, so it kind of had this layer of you're not really killing, hurting uh, innocent people, but. I don't know, some of those superhero abilities, just the ability to just toss dudes straight up in the air or into skyscrapers just at random and just some of the other things you can do. Um, I mean, How often were you doing that to, like, innocent people? or? So I did it toward more towards the beginning of the game, but just it still had that ability. Like, I, I did it more so in Saints Row the Third. That was kind of my argument against it, but just but some of the, the range of things you can you could do in Saints Row Four is what... Uh, one won this one over. I mean, I, I mean, I get it that it. I mean, I, yeah, there's some of that. The powers were fun, but I never at any point did I th- think of I got to use these powers against these people, and that would be a fun thing to do. Like when you first play, you know, say the like the old GTA games or something, and you're sure. doing the like, oh man, I'm doing some terrible stuff that you would never think of doing in real life, but you can get away with it here. It's not, I. What's I, don't know. I didn't think Saints. Where's George your vote? That. GTA didn't do it either. Yeah. Where's your vote? Tomb Raider. Nice. <laughs> that pickaxe, <laughs> that pickaxe, and that shotgun, man. I, I, like the, like these guys are assholes, and I actually enjoyed yep. sticking it to them, and so did Larry. <laughs> yeah, like, I, and, I, and I felt that way about Bioshock Infinite, just like how how horrible people in Columbia were. It felt real good to some of them, destroy them. Some of them. Some of them. Like some, like, yeah, not, it's like some cops yeah, and some like, security guards that are just getting their paycheck and I'm just like, did I really need to grind him in the face with that skyhook? I don't care. That was fun. But the racist assholes, yeah. they were really satisfying. Yeah. But I think I think you're yeah, right. Not, you're right, Josh. Larry's justification in Tomb Raider was a, a big motivator. Well, she, she started to... She had those moments in the store where you're like, man, is she starting to enjoy this? <laughs> yeah, and, and, that's true. And I kind of was too. I'm like, these guys, you know, they're like, 
they're nasty and they're rapey and like I just want to <laughs> blow someone's head off, man. They deserve it. And yeah. then you do and boy, it's satisfying. I didn't ever feel satisfied killing people in Saints Row or GTA or um I didn't feel that way in Bioshock. I mean it was like I'm I'm doing this stuff and oh, no, you know, I, it could be fun I, sometimes, but I never feel like I I'm took like, a little you know, yeah, I wasn't taking like guilty pleasure in it. I took a little too much pleasure in the Skyhook melee kills sometimes. Like I was just yeah, those I, yeah, I would just yeah. go on a, a, a tear <laughs> with those for a while. Um, and I think The Last of Us was the 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 other one that was kind of close to this for the same reason. Just it's almost the brutality of the violence, but like in the end, that wasn't as fun. Like there were there were times I lost myself in in Larry's character and in Bioshock Infinite, but um, but yeah, the guys the guys won me over with their Saints Row Four arguments. So. Um, Next up, best best debut, uh, new franchise, new IP, uh, not, doesn't necessarily uh, lend itself to a sequel, but it's just best original uh, game. And uh, our finalists were Rogue Legacy and Valda Story, Abyssal City, and the winner was Gunpoint. Um, man, this is this is where Gunpoint started to kind of turn the tide a bit. Like it 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 had some it had some real support. And uh, looking back at the development history of this game. Um, and, um, uh, it's, it, it's, it's going to be, it, it was a pretty big achievement. Do you, so this, I don't know about <laughs> you, Cole, but when I looked at this in the voting and I saw, like, I'm looking at it right now, best debut and it says a new franchise that deserves a sequel. Mm-hmm. And I actually, it was, that threw you skewed. off. Yeah. Well, I thought I'm like, do I want a sequel out of some Yeah. Place? Right. Yeah. And Gunpoint was amazing, uh, and what an achievement for Tom Francis. But I don't necessarily want a second Gunpoint. I want another game. Yeah, from him. From him, but I don't want another Gunpoint. And, and you know, I want another Rogue Legacy. I'd love to see that with you know more content or that fleshed out in mm-hmm. different ways, and the characters be a little more unique. And you know, I can think of a lot of reasons why I'd want to. Would you like another to that. Richard Conway game? To that character or something else, but I mean, I think we kind of on the show yeah. we we talked through the semantics of that, and it was more yeah. trying to get back to just like the debut side of things, like its future. Throw that out the window, but like biggest impact for original original game. So yeah, oh sure. I mean, a de- debut from a guy who was a writer <laughs> for PC Gamer. That's pretty. That was the most impressive. Mm. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. <laughs> from that. Nice. I love how all these games were indie games. You know, indie games, fifteen dollars <laughs> or less. Yep, they're playing with the big boys for sure. Valve story, I haven't played a whole lot of. A couple hours, that game is phenomenal. Um, but I would like, like, if we do go down the road to see like a future sequel, I'd like the controls to be a little bit tighter. Sure. Uh, but um, I don't. Yeah, all these games were, I think. Definitely deserving of this award, for sure. I think the uh, oh. the new <laughs> the new category that we had the most fun with was the uh, best real job, um, <laughs> and our finalists were the border inspector from Papers Please, uh, a worthless nosy college kid from Gone Home, um, <laughs> and the winner uh, was a trucker from Euro Truck Simulator Two because I think that was actually Josh's job for. A few weeks there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, re- I was really getting into it. I never had so much fun just listening to the radio and driving down the highway. <laughs> Eight like, hour man, shift, man. Yeah, and then like, you know, looking at the time and like, can I get this delivery there before it gets dark? And, and then we, you know, it's. <laughs> and the game getting, <laughs> the game getting concerned. Uh, didn't did the game make you take a break like a mile from your destination or something during our live stream? Like it was you were going down oh, the highway and it was yeah. just like no you were you were too you need some rest you need to get off the road. I was try- yeah, I was trying to work <coughs> sleep and yeah, it was it, it, I was having problems. You're like yeah, you gotta, you gotta sleep and you gotta get gas and you gotta hit the way station and and all and you gotta follow the rules of the road. You know that's the yeah. I mean that that stuff was like how this the, all this mundane crap. Why is it so much fun? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. You know what? I never at any point put a lot of real deep thought into why 
I kept playing the game or had fun with it or if that's what you call it, whatever. Just went with it. Yeah. And that was maybe part of you did why lose I your, enjoyed it. You did lose yourself a little, for, for a little while. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think Paper Please was uh, pretty much right up there too in the same same regard, but I think we had more fun with uh, being a trucker uh, when it comes it comes down to it. And there's just some... There's some heinous shit going on in Papers, Please, so that might not be the... I do not want that job. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up is... This was, this, was a, this was a lot of nominees for Best Gameplay Gimmick. gimmick. And um, this is just for that, that standout mechanic in a game that, um, that you wouldn't mind... Uh, that, that really worked in that game, you wouldn't mind uh, seeing more of. And our finalists... Uh, were the uh, the narrator the narration uh, storytelling aspects of uh, uh, Call of War as Gunslinger and the mem- memory manipulating and remember me which probably won the award for game mentioned the most uh, on the show uh, thanks to uh, two assholes in particular of our cast um, <laughs> and then the uh, the winner was wirejacking from Gunpoint um, and just how it just elevated its puzzle solving aspects of that game. And, uh, that was, uh, that was really satisfying. Uh, I particularly enjoyed like, you know, most of this stuff was, you know, wire switches to lights and to doors and, and that kind of thing. And there are ways to like, so you can stealthily get, get through each of each of the buildings. Uh, but I particularly like just enjoyed, you could, you could do that, but you could also have some fun with it and just like literally like open doors and knock dudes out with it and just playing with the AI. Um, and, and confusing them when lights are flickering on and off. That was, I don't know, that was a, like a fun distraction uh, aside from like the actual, the, the gameplay implementation of it. I'm really glad that the um, Skyhook is not on this list. <laughs> well, uh, I think it... <laughs> just because you didn't have to use that at all, like yeah. to fight or it was just, yeah, you use it to travel to different locations, but it wasn't like, I don't know. It wasn't necessary, I guess. I don't know. The, I, I wouldn't go with the sky hook, but I'd go with the uh, or this or the, the sky lines. Is that what they're called? Um, sky lines, yeah. Because I, I don't know. Using that in combat is pretty, still was still pretty exhilarating when you'd get a get a good room. It didn't happen near enough, um, but uh, there were there were times where I was just I, really having fun with that. But I'm saying you don't have you didn't have to do it, so yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, that's that's my issue with it. Gotcha. Like you, you could choose just to stay on your. I mean, that's. I would. I would say a I lot know. of, a lot of uh, Bioshock's gameplay was loses some points because of that because you have all those choices. For sure. Like, but For sure. Josh. Yeah, no, I was. I I use the, the little skylines constantly in that game because, <laughs> but I'm, that's just I'm not, super great sometimes at those games and and those those solving those combat oh. puzzles would take me a little more time sometimes because of the narrow focus and weaponry I chose or, or right. you know, plasmids right. or whatever they call them. Um, uh, so I used them a lot just to get a breather. Uh, but that's not necessarily like something that I, I wouldn't necessarily put on the list, but yeah, uh, I'm uh, read- wire, I want to say agree with the wirejacking. That was really nice. Cool. Yeah. Nice. But- wirejacking is amazing. I do want to read through some of the nominees for Cole and just see if any of these jump out to, to you guys, because we had a lot of these, but it was, it's, it's still kind of fun to look back at, the standout features of, the, of these games, but um, um, the camera uh, from Outlast, the handheld camera, your hands in Sur- Surgeon Simulator 2013, oh, yeah. your j- your job and papers, please. That was my vote. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the the link flattening from Zelda: Link Between Worlds, uh, playing golf or other, any other random task in Grand Theft Auto V, the the jumping pants from Gunpoint, which were mentioned in the tool in our best guns. Uh, uh, just being a superhero in Saints Row 4, swapping and cloning in the Swapper, uh, cloning in Super Mario 3D World, um, multiple characters, Grand Theft Auto 5, harpooning in Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, the music levels of Rayman Legends, Arc Falls of Defiance, um, the audience interaction in Foul Play, duels of Call of War as Gunslinger, the use of 3D in Lake Between Worlds, um, Motion Tracker and Aliens, Colonial Marines, Weapon Crafting, Dead Space 3, Thief Skills, Monaco, Being Hunted and Sir, You're Being Hunted, Taking Care of Others and Save Decay, and the, the Cat Suit and Super Mario 3D World, and the Teleporter and Risk of Rain. So, 
So I, I have maybe one or two um, to add, I guess, to that. Like, like just thinking about it because it was interesting, and it, from my perspective I, or from my knowledge, it wasn't ever done before. Um, is the the characters of like the the ancestry characters in Rogue Legacy? Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, yeah. How, yeah, yeah. Your characters could change, oh, and then yeah. also um, just. Like the different mechanics within, like the leveling up in that game with um, saving your castle yep. for the next run. Like yep. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I, I think I, I kind of, and I want to look at this next year. We have a mind fuck of the year category coming up next, but and the genetics got thrown in there. Um, yeah. But there, there was a little bit of a blurred lines uh, between like c- clever gameplay mechanic or twist and uh, like the, just the standout feature. So. Um, I think that's uh, we'll we'll try to clean that up for next year. But uh, all right, I just yeah. I want to throw out real quick. I said I mentioned it. Papers, please. Your job. I yeah. thought the gameplay in that game was br- so brilliant yeah. that like it would actually. I actually was having fun examining someone's credentials, their papers, <laughs> their IDs, tickets, all this for discrepancies accuracy to isn't that weird and then when you, and, it, and it's like you, you, doing the job right didn't always make you feel good yeah you know that there's, there's a satisfaction like in doing something correctly normally but then sometimes you go they'd be talking to you pleading for like there's like there's one woman who's pleading for her life you know, they'll kill me if you don't let me through. And then her shit's forged and you find out and you're like, oh, my God. I get, <sighs> dude, I send her through just because. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I get docked, but then I can worry about my kids like that. Oh, I was all about, it's like, it's all about my family. Right. I don't give a shit about your family. <laughs> <Stop like that. laughs> like I just drew, I drew some hard lines. But it's it's interesting in Papers, Place where you, you hit that moment where that game becomes fun. Because it's not, it's not immediate. So mm-hmm. it, uh. But there, yeah, it was just like I was addicted to the game, could not uh, wait to keep keep playing it. So, next up is the uh, the mind fuck of the year. Uh, very similar to our mechanic, uh, like I was saying, this is the most clever gameplay mechanic or <coughs> twist or twist. And um, our finalists were um, the whole aspect of choice in the Stanley Parable, uh, pretty much everything in Antechamber. Um, but our winner uh, was how the controls tied to the story of Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. Any issues, questions, concerns, support? Do we do do we do we do a good job? Meh. <laughs> yes. Okay. It was, yeah, I mean that was that was okay. I wasn't. It wasn't mind blowing. Oh my god! Like antechamber was way more of a mind fuck. I had my mind blown while I was getting punched in the stomach at the exact same time. So, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Like that was, that was more sweet. So yeah, like to to be to to nail it down, it's the moment where I was stuck controlling the little brother and did not know how, what to do, and then I thought through it and realized what I was about. In order to solve this, what I was going to have to do and the uh, what that meant. See, I just did it. Like, no, those, see, yeah, I got stuck. Sequence, yeah, I got I stuck. I was like, oh, this is really cool, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go. <gasps> it wasn't like that, but it was. What it was did really what did that to your brain moment. this year? I mean, antechamber just, it also <laughs> melted it. So I don't know if you could call that mind fuck. It was more like a mind, it was like. Put my brain in microwave, and that's what happened. I felt <laughs> dumb when I played that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just for sure. Humbly. Uh, and uh, Cookie Clicker. Jeez. We've been playing Cookie Clicker. It doesn't happen as quickly as I expected. Like, but uh, that game's yeah. weird, man. Like it, it, and you were around. You you were part of like the little zeitgeist around that. So you were you were in it. I came to it much later. So because when you. Like honestly, when you start passing that link around, like I just thought, oh, this is just another dumb game. I didn't expect it to be like the frog fractions of the year type of thing. So, was just like, <laughs> so I can never tell, like, what part of Josh's mind is sharing this link with his friends. Like, is this <laughs> dumb or is this weird? So. Uh, Cole, did you have a did you have a mind fuck this year? Yeah, 
Um, going back to uh, um, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> you would have left a number on you. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. Uh, no, going the brothers, the brothers one for sure. Um, yeah. Going back to uh, what the fuck? What's Bioshock called? Like, Bioshock Infinite. Game? No, no, the first game, the Rapture. Rapture, yeah. Oh yeah. What Rapture was. Going yeah. back to Rapture was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, the whole end of that game is just like I can get another game that just kind of makes you think about what just happened. Did mm-hmm. either of you play uh, Stanley whatever. Parable? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. All right. I've seen it before, and I've seen yeah. the mod, and I had a lot of fun with that. I had a lot of fun with that. Because I, I didn't know anything about it, so going going into that fresh was mm-hmm. that was fun. Uh, worst first impression. Uh, granted, I think most of these didn't even turn out turn out well after the first impression. But the idea was that just that initial bad taste in your mouth. The game might have recovered, but um, that we weren't limiting it to that. So, but um, EA takes it takes it this year <laughs> with uh, a finalist of Battlefield Four and NBA Live fourteen, and the winner uh, Sim City, <laughs> and uh, um, you know. Underneath it all, Battlefield 4, there's a good game in there. It's still a very impressive list of bugs out there. And, yeah. uh, you know, NBA Live just kind of broken, but SimCity, uh, that, wow, I'm still kind of floored by that by everything around that game. Yeah, I definitely don't have an issue with this uh, EA <laughs> uh, list here. I will say a little story about NBA Live. So I saw the demo came out yeah. on PS4, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'm in the mood for a basketball game. Let me play this. And I played it, and I was like, this game is terrible. <laughs> just, but you, just, were, you were playing it wrong, Cole. You, you didn't know how to use yeah, it. Yeah, I, I didn't know how to use the controls because they didn't teach you how to use the controls. That's what their live streams are and for. And then I played 2K14 like the next day. I'm just like, yeah. oh, my God. The or. It made it, <laughs> it made it even worse than it was when I was actually playing because how broken it was. <laughs> or I could play a game that works. I mean, they know they yeah. don't. I'll be curious. Like, I don't know. Like I don't, I wonder what EA's long term plans are with live because like I don't think they can't turn it around in a, in a year. It's not like, I mean, fifteen will be better, but it <laughs> maybe yeah. Ugh. Ugh. And I also like that they held it back for just the next gen stuff, the next gen platforms on that game, and uh, then got yeah. It's like you see screenshots comparing the two. It's just oh man, that is yeah. it's crazy. They look like I mean they look like two different generations. <laughs> Yeah, they do. And it also looks like they didn't take... It was like, some okay, the characters in 2K look like 3D scans with some cool technology where like little cameras fly around you and go bzz, bzz, and hit you with lasers to scan you. It looks like in live, someone had like a real pixely photograph, like a thumbnail of the dude, like on one monitor over here, and over here he was trying to like, by hand, to draw it, recreate it or something. <laughs> And that <laughs> is the difference between the character quality. Uh, did you play? Or have you been playing Battlefield Four? I know you were you were into Battlefield Three, Josh. I some, I, yeah, the game. I have had some issues okay. with that game. All right. some connection problems, some wonkiness involved there. I like a lot of connection problems. I I, I run a pretty clean saves. system. I know when it's not my fault. You know. Yeah. Like I, I lost, I lost single player saves on the PS4, which was pretty fucking awesome. That's awful. That's yeah. awful. Yeah, yeah. That's re- yeah. Bad taste in your yeah. mouth makes you not want to go back to it. So I'm gonna wait, and I'll eventually maybe go back to it. But you know, if I don't, I'm not gonna cry. Um, next up is our early access beta of the year. We did decide that if you could buy it this year, uh, that it was eligible for an award. So, uh, but these are the games that are still, um, well, at least at the end of. 2013 in early access or beta form. So our finalists were... This was actually pretty contentious. But our finalists were Starbound and Xenonauts. And our winner was Broforce. Uh, which was interesting because... For most of this category, I was leaning on the... like How well did you support your early access or your beta? Like How well did you communicate? Broforce is more of dropping a bomb with its prototype that is just fucking phenomenal. And I'm just still... I still go back and play that game. And I'm still just stoked for... For the, for the full version to come out this year, like that 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 game is incredible. <laughs> it's what I I it's what I thought Mercenary Kings was also going to be, <laughs> but Broforce is just fun. It's ridiculous. I don't have any problems with this list, but I also see some in the nominations that mm. 
Like, I'm really looking forward to... I, uh, I can't wait to see more of Cube World. Like, yeah. That game was really neat. We had that fun was with really that. neat. But it f- kind of fell off the face of the earth, more. also. Like, like I, I mean, it's a small team, but yeah. that was kind of more of the... You know, Starbound and Xenonauts kind of handled their communication a little bit better. Like, I feel... Sure. Like, that guy kind of goes goes into his hole and he'll come back up with a big update and I'm sure it'll be fine, but I lost yep. I lost, lost a little like gusto for Cube World. Was uh, Tiny Barbarian nominated? Because it's technically not a full game, right? It's episodic. Other... It's, okay. And it's out, so, so yeah. Okay, yeah. that doesn't count. Yeah. If anything, it would ha- run into our uh, um, Wolf Among Us, Walking Dead problem of being that episodic, yeah. but... Okay, for sure. But he's not even talking about... I'm assuming Episode 2 will be out this year, but... That thing was pretty self-contained as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why I lost some of my energy for Nuclear Throne, but that was the other. That was the one I was. I think was battling with Xenonauts for that last place. But uh, Ethan, Ethan is heavy into Xenonauts and made a strong case. So, all right. It's too bad we can't talk about Elder Scrolls Online <laughs> for beta. They still they're still restricting all that stuff. Yeah, I think so. I don't even like. I don't know enough to know what your laughs are coming from. So I've been ignoring. Well, I mean, you can see there's footage online, yeah. which you could see to judge for yourself. But, uh, <coughs> um, yeah. next up, best moment of the year, uh, dramatic, comedic, spoiler moment in games that you always remember from this year. Um, our finalists were <laughs> the the ending to Far Cry Three Black Blood Dragon. I almost called it Black Dragon. That's a different game. <laughs> Um, I th- yeah. we just called it the 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 winter scene in The Last of Us, but but also you could say the ending as well. Um, and then again, the final chapter of Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons wins Best Moment of the Year. So uh, this one was pretty contentious, but where do you guys land? Um, I can see. I'm not upset with Brothers winning, um, just because that was you know. That was a pretty powerful moment, I thought, for me. Um, just the whole after the um, after you go in the cave with the, the girl on, basically. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. Um, Last of Us hadn't finished yet, so I haven't gotten there. But um, from everything that I've heard people say, like, yeah. There's so many crazy. moments in The Last of Us. Like, it is mm-hmm. just, yeah. God, the game is mean. I mean, it's just mean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, like, best moment of the year and also the worst moment in yeah. a video game is the beginning of The Last of Us. It's, yeah. Like, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> I, I, I played that moment for my fiance, and she's like, why the hell did you just make me watch that? Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> um, did you finish, did either of you finish Blood Dragon? I can't speak to the ending other than Ethan spoiled it for me. Yeah, he was. No, I didn't because I can't get past the. He was pretty pumped tutorial. up for that, and the uh, the argument became he wanted Blood Dragon to win so he could have a positive, uplifting moment and <laughs> over this like really depressing year. So he was pretty adamant about it. It was pretty funny. Man, um, I, I it, hmm. yeah, Last of Last of Us has Last of Us and Bioshock both have tons of a really amazing moment, mm. but I'll say that. And I'm, and I will talk about the story stuff later. But um, Bioshock had some great moments that I think were it's actually actually its strongest points. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think like overall, you know, some of the story stuff like it, you know, comparatively toward to Last of Us, I'm like, eh, I don't know, I like the characters better in Last of Us, that kind of stuff. But yeah. um, Bioshock had these moments that were just, <laughs> and I thought that. There, there was this. There was a moment, and here's a. This is a sweet one. <laughs> the, the song in the basement, and a, no, not yeah. that. Yeah, that was amazing. Was it? And, um, uh, was it in the credits where he? They, yes. they had that scene, and the like. Yes. So they were yeah. rehearsing that song, and he, and Ken Levine had to tell them to, be less professional. Like your characters would uh, not be. Sure. Yeah, your characters would not be this good at playing and singing the song. So please fuck up some more. <laughs> It was so, like that. Yeah. It was so sweet, and those, that was a, mo- and you could miss it. Mm. You could never see that. But it, it, like, I couldn't, you know, it was, like, really nice to have to have, like, just, like, a little quiet moment, and it said a lot about the characters, and it was also just a great little performance thing, and it was unexpected, and 
Um, yeah. I'm sure there were people that got to the end of that game, saw that scene in the credits, and were like, "What was? Oh, they never used this, you know, because you could. It was just a little side thing." I mean, there were there were more uh, in, like it's hard. It's, it was hard to pick crazy the, moments, but it was hard to pick the moment from both Bioshock and Last of Us for sure. Yeah, and uh, but uh, I, mean, I think any one of them had more impact than the best moments of a lot of most other games mm-hmm. all year long. Are you indifferent to the brothers' pick? You know, yeah, so, that was. Yeah, man. I'm, you take Last of Us or Brothers Shock over that? Well, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm okay with it. Okay. And, and Brothers is the, the mo- actually the one that's the most fresh in my mind. Um, and that was just a. That, <laughs> the, 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 the moment, the final, the final chapter. I kind of knew it was coming. Yeah. Because everyone, like, I couldn't. <laughs> it, it was the, kind of the reason that lots of people were talking about the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wasn't so surprised by that, but the thing I was surprised most about in Brothers was everything leading up to that, like the, how this, the world, what an amazing adventure, compressed like Odyssey, the kind of thing they go on. It's really, th- that's the game is really impressive on a lot of levels, and I was had that a little bit spoiled for me the ending yeah. stuff, but it still played out really well, and there was a lot of emotions going on there, and. Um, you know, I'm okay with brothers winning as many awards as it can. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to shout out the other ones that were at least nominated just because I like this category. Um, uh, but pretty much the, everything, all the choice stuff in Santa Parable. Um, the boss fights from Devil May Cry. Like, that was some of the, the best action of the year. The intro to Saints Row 4. Um, some people would even say the, the, the ending as well. Um, just... The entire aspect of low rule and Zelda Link Between Worlds. <laughs> the final choice that you have in Call of War as Gunslinger, that was a little bit surprising. Um, the lighthouses in Bioshock Infinite. Um, the intro to Outlast and just how kind of debilitating that was. <laughs> the concept of Abstergo Entertainment in Assassin's Creed 4, Black Fro- Flag, and everything that kind of takes place in, in that uh, kind of made me laugh. And then the, the attic scene in Gone Home. So... Uh, moving on to the For the Kids Award. Uh, basically, best cross-generational game uh, accessible. Both both generations enjoy it. Um, our finalists were Super Mario 3D World and Skylander Swap Force. Uh, but the winner was Lego Marvel Super Heroes. I think the only battle here was really between Swap Force and Disney Infinity, and it still seems like from the consensus of nephews and nieces and sons and daughters that were connected to our crew that Skylanders has a little bit more legs right now still than uh, than Disney Infinity. So, All I know is that I got it for Nathan's kids for Christmas and they're addic- they're like two and a half, three and they're addicted to it. Oh wow, so nice. Disney, Disney Infinity. Yeah, I, I, you could go either way with that one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the broad appeal of Marvel superheroes is... Uh, pretty hard to deny. So, um, next up, hold on. Really? Just what? skip the oh. next one. No, there we yeah, go. For real. Uh, most addictive game of the year. <laughs> um, Get out of here. Is uh, <laughs> yeah. Rogue Legacy. Oh, yo! Oh, I see why. I see where you're upset. The uh, the finalists <laughs> for most addictive game of the year is Cookie Clicker and Starbound. Um, the underdog Vic, Vic, Victor here, uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Um, I'm, I'm I had really it disappointed in Cooper, Coop, and Ethan <laughs> for letting this slide. Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> I had an agenda to just get the game in the conversation. I did not expect it to win, so this was uh, this was a great moment for me. Um, but 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 you know. When it came down to it, it was the game that Aaron and I kept going back to for. We could not could not stop playing it every day for uh, an extended period of time there. So uh, that's where that came from. Um, I think well, Star but, just should have put Candy Crush in there then. I didn't play that's Candy Crush. I didn't play Candy Crush. We didn't play Candy Crush. So, did every, but everyone everyone else did. Friend, <laughs> they played every day yeah. and they couldn't they can't put it down because <laughs> it's in their hands because it's on their phone. I had to think that's. God, I don't, think, I don't know. I don't hate this it's, game so much. So innocent. I don't, I don't care. Uh, I don't. But it's just a whatever. 
I mean, it's fine, and it's got a place, but, like, why is it... I don't know why you guys were so adamant about I don't know. conversation. It's like, was it so drastically different than all the previous Animal Crossings? No. It, like, it was so worth talking about now, and it wasn't... <laughs> no, I mean, it, it was a lot easier with the online stuff than, um, let's say, the DS version, so I enjoyed pulling people into my town that way. Um, and I kind of got taken in just by... Honestly, like, the social buzz around it. Like, just to see... It was the first Animal Crossing game that was played that social media was really involved in. And just seeing everybody talk about it constantly and a lot of my feeds just drew me to the game more and just felt like I was involved in something a little bit bigger than um, just playing with my friends, which I've done before. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the that was the big difference. I don't think the game itself was a monumental leap forward for the Animal Crossing franchise. But it's just, you know, it's just kind of like... That iteration improvement and the polish it came together with, with kind of a great year for the 3DS. So um, it was I couldn't stay away. So um, all right, we'll move on. <laughs> put that put that behind you guys and move on to expansion or DLC of the year. There's some there's some fighting over the definitions of this one as well. Uh, but what we came down to with our finalists here. Uh, were Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon and Borderlands 2, the oh. Tina Tina DLC, the Escape from Dragon Keep, I believe. Uh, but the winner was XCOM Enemy Within, uh, which apparently um, that's the only, that's the de facto way to play Enemy Unknown now, is Ethan contends that you must use the Enemy Within content, and mm-hmm. it's a much better game for it. Did you get into Enemy Within, Josh? Uh, no, but um, knowing what it is and what's in it, I'm okay with it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, winning. But I do have a problem with one of the runners. Tiny uh, Tina. You just hate Tiny Tina. Look, can it's, you put her out of your? Dumb. Like, why do you guys enjoy that crap? Like, it's <laughs> off. It's a terrible character. It's not funny. You I don't, guys don't no. think that's funny. Why do you say that you think it's funny? When I don't. I, have I said that? <laughs> I find her inoffensive. I find her like I ignore her. She doesn't bother me, but she does, like I'm not. I'm not saying I don't like prop her up on any high level as a great character, but she's what? just another I, character I, in Borderlands to me. They're all weird and they're they're that, fine. I just I, but put that out of your mind. Can you at least concede right. the concept of of the DLC that almost? I think this is the closest thing we had to Blood Dragon. Of traditional DLC, and that it was a kind of a reskinning of existing Borderlands content, doing that kind of Dungeons and Dragons approach uh, to to Borderlands it was kind of cool. Yeah, I just there, <laughs> Jesus. <yeah. laughs> there were uh, right. there were some good. I don't like. I did. I wish I'd played Citadel because yeah. I heard a lot of good stuff about that, and I also we upset some people with that. I didn't play like the Dark Arisen stuff. Yeah, so. Because I would have loved to have fought for Dragon more Dragon's Dogma. Dogma this year. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the Dragonmore DLC is pretty fun. But, you know, also kind of standard, so I yeah. can get that. But um, um, for me, the best DLC of the year was Star Trek Online's Legacy of Romulus. <laughs> sure. Expansion. <laughs> we didn't know how to support you in that. It, it got mentioned. It got its. It got verbally <laughs> acknowledged as a thing. So. But you have to like that game to begin with in order to vote for its DLC. Yep. But... Whatever. Yeah. I got nothing against Star Trek Online, so only heard good things from you. And Ethan, I think, enjoyed it when he played played with you that one time. So mm-hmm. uh, this another big category, best looking game of the year. So this is uh, style and technical achievements. Combine it all into just what you think is the most impressive um, and best looking. Our finalists were Bioshock Infinite and Rayman Legends, and the winner was The Last of Us. Uh, Naughty Dog trying to break the PlayStation 3. Apparently it broke our eyeballs yeah. as well, so in the best way possible. This was this was tough. Um I don't really think we had the, you know, Dragon's Crown, Rayman. We didn't have like that super artistic this like I think last year Dust took this home and uh like we didn't have that kind of um I don't know, heavy, heavy, heavy style game. Like this was, these were technical achievements with Last of Us and Bioshock Infinite, but also just overall art design. But I mean, The Last of Us, I, you, you, sh- you could have convinced people it was a PlayStation Four game, and 
the tricks that they that Naughty Dog pulled off to like. Um, I I mean I, you look at this compared to like Beyond Two Souls that focuses on, you know, character animation and motion capture and character performance, and I think The Last of Us just blows it out of the water. Like it was most of these scenes don't work if you don't connect with Joel and Ellie and the tricks they were able to do um, to to bring those performances to life it were just uh, incredible. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with it there. I had actually a hard time looking at all the, again, I'm right now I'm looking at the nominees mm-hmm. and I'm, I, you know, I, no games this year blew me away. Okay. I, I, I like the last of us because it definitely is the most impressive as far as how they pull that off on the PlayStation three. That was, that was pretty crazy. I think Bioshock had all kinds of moments. Mm-hmm. When you first get into Jeez. Columbia and, yeah. and you and you are seeing that like that bazaar for the first time and all that kind of stuff, that's wow, you know, mm-hmm. that's pretty, that's pretty amazing, and that has moments. I thought Nino Cooney was that was a cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Devil May Cry, I thought you were talking about the stylized kind of super artistic yeah. approach, and I think that one is probably the closest to it, nice. and it's yeah. You know, for what it is, it does a lot of the crazy. It does some. It does some really interesting things. Mm-hmm. I think that should, it could have made the list. Rayman, Legends being a finalist was a little weird. I thought because Rayman, it's, I don't think it looks that much different than Rayman Origins. Mm-hmm. Right. And so to have a game that looks like the last one to me, and I don't yeah. have the experience maybe with it that others would that could argue against mm-hmm. what I'm saying, but I don't think it uh, necessarily was more impressive or I think that I, much better than other stuff. I, I approached my argument from a, a similar angle, but uh, Aaron was able to win over the rest of the cr- rest, rest of the crew, and I caved. So um, yeah, I, I, I like to like. I think, I think it came- brothers looked brothers look fantastic, especially like when you sit on the benches, like just the yeah. of the, <laughs> the the scene, of the, especially like the giants, and then when you're in that tower, um, and then uh, I also really enjoyed. Um, Tomb Raider, like looking over the uh, yeah. the cliffs and stuff, and just you could just see for a long. I mean, I played it on PC, but yeah, there's you could a, just see for days at Tomb Raider. There's one screenshot that I took from that game of like when you get out of the shanty town and you're like you've blown everything up, like blown up all the caves, and um, I think it's like after you come out of the caves and you yeah, it was when you're using all the fire arrows to blow up all the, <laughs> the gas deposits and you. You come out and you just look over at this shanty town where the caves are underneath and everything is just on fire and it's just like, yeah. whoa. Um, I still think Wind Waker HD is the best looking game of the year, but didn't have the heart to. Uh, <laughs> well, the Mario looks pretty damn good too. Yeah, yeah. I, was, ends I, I love where Mario. I love where Nintendo's going with their, um, their 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 graphical style for this generation. So that yeah, that is a that is a really just crisp. Art style and uh, execution, mm-hmm. like that. I, I thought that one looked really good. I'd, I'd have been okay with. I'd have been okay with a lot of these. Yeah. Things. yeah. Dragon's Crown was yeah pretty amazing looking, but it was also had some questionable d- design decisions <laughs> in the art there. And then, some boobs. If X Rebirth had ran better, yeah, it graphically would have that would have made the list for me because nice. it does look really, really, really good. But it runs like crap, so didn't make it for me. I didn't vote for it. Next up, mobile game of the year. So this iOS, Android, your tablet phone <laughs> games. Uh, finalists were Hundreds and Year Walk, and the winner, kind of run away here, was the Ridiculous Fishing. Uh, not exactly a category we are extremely adamant about, but there we 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 play a handful of games. I was pretty pretty happy with ri- Ridiculous Fishing for winning because. Um, I've been looking for the right platform to play this on. I had it on my like my big iPad, and that thing is a little unwieldy for a tilt game. But uh, playing that game on a phone, I like, I love everything about it. So, and uh, did either of you play Hundreds or Year Walk? You put might have played Year Walk, Josh. No, I thought I'd, okay. No, you tried to talk me into it. I play games uh, like an adult on television. Okay, all right, fair enough. Move on to another, um, <laughs> or a proper handheld with yeah, or a proper handheld. handheld game of the year, uh, 3ds Vita hey. games. Um, 
this was this was this is weird because this one was hard because not everybody played the same games. This was very divided, like we didn't have the overlap. But uh, finalists were Animal Crossing: New Leaf and Pokemon XY, and the winner, The Legend of Zelda: A Link Between Worlds. I know you guys don't have an issue with the winner, but no. um, Spelunky got Spelunky got discounted just for its release last year. Um, the one we were most curious about curious about was Tearaway. Um, and then everything else was just too spread out because we got Monster Hunter wow. 3, Luigi's Mansion was pos- a possibility, Fire Emblem was a possibility. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we enjoyed our Vitas this year, but we were going through the library and doing, you know, uh, cross platform stuff. So um, is there anything else that, what would you have bumped Animal Crossing off since you hate that game? Uh, I would have put Fire Emblem on there. I would also have probably put Mario and Luigi's Dream Team. Oh, there. nice, nice. Um, but I don't play Pokemon or Animal Crossing, so yeah, there was those no. Are just, those would be my top three. There was no budging on Pokemon. With Aaron was pretty adamant about that, and just, he just, as far as yes, it's an iterative game, but he just thought it was pretty fantastic, and um, so I knew that one wasn't moving. Um, I think Tearaway would have squeezed in if more people had played it. Honestly, yeah. But it looks like the kind of game we would have enjoyed had yeah. we played it. <laughs> yeah. You guys want to say anything about Link Between Worlds? Um, kind of the chance to do that. I, I would like to say that that is, and I think I said it earlier maybe in the show, but I think it might be the best video game video game sure. of the year. Sure. <laughs> like out of all, not just handhelds. Did... The thing I keep going back to with that game, it, I feel like it was like the perfect length. Also, like there was no lull in that game. It was just uh, I loved every dungeon. I just the, I don't know the pacing of that game was uh, brilliant for as much extra fluff that they have been putting into Zelda games in recent years and just stuff that was became, became kind of a slog or repetitive. I enjoyed just every minute of the best part, <laughs> being in that world. The best part that has changed from the console face. Zelda's is they finally just let you jump in and go. Yep. And I think that's it might be an underrated aspect of that game, but to me that's like finally they yeah. maybe they listen to what everybody's complaining about. And just let's just we know how to fucking play video games. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to hold our hands through it. And a kid is so smart. We figured it. We you put a kid on the original Legend of Zelda. Granted, we had tons of tell, like the only game we had, and tons of time to play it. We figured that shit out. You trusted me let, with Zelda kids, when I was seven. <laughs> yeah, let kids now just go. They'll learn it. Yeah. Don't fucking handhold them. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent with you. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like this final, like oh shit, a Nintendo game that feels like what I want a Nintendo game to be. Like I love, mm-hmm. I like the characters and the, you know, I, I like a lot of the things that they are trying for, and then. There's just so much crap that just like that gets forced on you, and and just like don't I don't need this tutorial. I don't, let's not stop and talk to another character with like a <laughs> stupid dialogue box for 20 minutes to just like get me in. The stuff that's fun isn't that stuff. Why yeah, they, they doing it? And they didn't. <laughs> this it was really. How cool. about um? They did they did that with Dream Team too, which was so frustrating because like yeah, fucking get it. You you have two buttons to press. Let's go. Was anybody else? Out sad to realize after this game that Nintendo's going to start probably moving away from the 3D stuff when this is easily their kind of best execution with 3D and verticality. Just the amount of, like, uh, jumping up levels in the dungeons or falling down and trying to, like, catch on to platforms uh, uh, down below. I just thought it was... It, that, that was, like, the most surprising feature was that they were that, leaning that was, on the 3D. No, that they, they did it... Well, see, I thought they did a really good job with it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, and if it in this particular game, like oh yeah, I can't really imagine it, you know, not being there. But it's also, I don't think that was the thing that made the game fun. Sure, it, it was. It, it was, was a nice surprise for me. I thought, I thought this was a great um, proof, or it, it, like a great example of what we've been saying for a long time, and a lot of people would argue against it. Where you go, like just give us those old school type of games. Like give me a sequel to. Super Metroid or Link to the <laughs> Past. We all we've been saying it, and then you know, and people would have 
all plenty of reason to say, but you don't really want that, or is that would that really work? Here, here it is. Like yeah. this is a this is a sequel to Link to the Past, which is for a lot of people's, and they're like one of the best games they've ever played or whatever. Sure. And I still play, it, you know, on an occasion, and it's still fun. And like it's like you can do that, and you can update it, and it can be amazing, and and it was done by Nintendo. Like it, someone else didn't come along. Yeah, this wasn't like a Nintendo B team or anything like that either. And I, like that was, boy, I was really impressed by this, and and it gave me a lot of hope. And I don't get the 3D stuff; it, it was great. But I, they don't need 3D to nah. uh, uh, revisit older gameplay styles and older games. And and I'm not saying they have to just keep making sequels to do the, to make a game this good. But but, but throw some bones every once in a while because they're yeah. Like, really hey, tasty. you can do this. You're successful at it. Yeah. So please awesome. give me a sequel to Super Metroid now. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, co-op game of the year. Our finalists are Dead Space 3, Monaco, What's Yours is Mine, and the winner, Payday 2. Um, although I'm still not sure why I'm shooting all those cops, but it was really fun. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I'll have to admit I didn't really, I haven't got to spend much time with a lot of the uh, those pure four-player co-op multiplayer games that are out there, like and in particular like Left 4 Dead, I haven't had that big crew experience with that where you're just barreling through those games. But Payday 2, I had a number of sessions with that. And um, I just thought it was a really, really well done game. Like it it's it I love I love the atmosphere, I like the music. I just kinda like I love how the guns felt. I like the missions and just had a lot of fun with it. I'm okay with it. Monaco probably if we had come back to it, like it was mm-hmm. a nice it's still a lot more chaotic than I expected. Like, yeah, my two heist games, I preferred the Payday 2 chaos to Monaco. Like, there was... Monaco's a little bit hard to follow at times, but uh, I'd still like to kind of uh, give that a whirl, like, local, and see see what that's like to play with people in the room. We've only played it online, so... When, when we played that, I thought... It, I had fun because we were all yeah. playing together, but... I, I was expecting a different experience out out of that going in. I thought it would be more cooperative and a little more of the planning out each situation and yeah. say, oh, we need this character class to go do this thing. Everyone else get in position and whatever. And it was just so much. Like we were constantly <laughs> setting off the alarms. It was so much chaos. It was we were stupid. Those damn dogs and it was it was nuts. That it was just absolutely out of control the whole time. Mm. That I wouldn't. Therefore, I wouldn't say it was the best co-op experience. Like, yeah, but it was. You know, it was interesting, fun, I guess. But anything else stand, more, I mean. stand out from our nominees list for you guys? Mm-hmm. All right. This is a, this right. is stupid, but I, I thought Defiance. I had the most. Maybe we talked about some that because that was like the again. That was the only reason we played that game, and I would still play it if we like. If we yeah. got a crew together, like I don't care yeah, what else is going would, on in that world. One, I, I would play that right now if we were going to play. If yeah. you said, hey, "Hey, let's jump in," but I had so much fun with Ethan. Yeah, um, it was you know with our little Mister Dave and um, I can't remember what's his character in that one. Uh, Brass Carlson probably. Or was it Chainsaw yeah. <laughs> Chainsaw Murphy. That was so much fun, <laughs> and he did a Brotabulous that was really really yeah. good. Go yeah. watch that on YouTube. Yeah. Competitive multiplayer game of the year. Um, probably my nominee for category to get rid of, just because we don't really play. Like, this isn't why we play games, but uh, it's still worth kind of revisiting. And then a couple of our nominees were 2012 releases, so that got a little bit hairy. So what we ended up with <laughs> here for the finalists was uh, Pokemon XY, uh, Grand Theft Auto Online, and the winner was Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. Uh, because it made me like a deck building game, and I don't like deck building games. And it's really super accessible and fun to play. Um, I was kind of surprised that <coughs> Just Cause 2 multiplayer didn't get in here. And then Super Pole Riders was uh, kind of disqualified, unfortunately. That, that would have won for us. But um, just Yeah, that one should. Yeah. And then I haven't played the Assassin's Creed. I haven't played the Assassin's Creed 4 multiplayer yet, but. I've always enjoyed that stuff too, but um, but I don't know if you, it, Hearthstone's still in beta. If you guys get a chance to uh, check it out, like the games are, they're they're super short and addictive, uh, mm-hmm. and the the matchmaking set up really well. 
I, I like it because you just play kind of anonymous, anonymously against uh, other online people. You can't chat. You just use your little emotes. So you can't. I don't know. It gets rid of some of the some of the like negative aspects of playing with a random people. But I I don't usually enjoy that stuff and related with this one. So gave it the, gave it the nod. I'm interested to try it because I play a lot of those kinds of games in traditional format mm-hmm. on the tabletop. It's fun. So I think I might like it. Um, yeah. man, this is this is one I might change the vote on, but because uh, I did play another comp- a competitor finally, but didn't have that information when we were voting. But best local multiplayer uh, finalists were Monaco and Luigi's Ma- Mansion Dark Moon. Um, I, I, yeah, I've actually heard quite a bit about that multiplayer lately. But the winner was Towerfall. The Ouya, the Ouya gets a nod. Um. But I did play Samurai Gun this week, local multiplayer. Oh, Holy shit. Mm. So go play that game. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then also play Nidhogg. That's also really fun. But Towerfall, um, uh, a couple a couple of the guys played that game. I couldn't really speak to it, but was definitely considering getting a new year just for that game until I read that it's coming out for PC. So uh, I'll have my Towerfall fun soon enough, but... Fill your couch for Towerfall if you can. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Legend of Dungeon. That was just that was just kind of a mixed game. I don't know. Like sometimes I really love that game. Sometimes that game was really boring. Um, there's just there's when it that was an early access thing. Mm-hmm. But just not enough to it yet. Yep. It needed more. I liked the art style, and um, and it seemed like it could be. It's pretty awesome, but it just needed more content. Sure. All right. Okay, now categories are a little, a little bit more passionate about, but music of the year. So this could be soundtrack or song. Um, lots of lots of great music this year. We actually narrowed it down to our finalists of the Star Trek, the Star Trek, <laughs> the soundtrack from Starbound, the soundtrack <laughs> from DMC Devil May Cry, and our winner. Um, the soundtrack to Tiny Barbarian DX. Um, so that game just consistently kept us pumped up throughout the entire entire adventure. But there were a lot of great nominees too. Um, some of, like that last the the credit song from The Last of Us really stick, stuck with me this year. Uh, the use of the music in Gone Home, even though I wasn't a particular fan of the individual songs. Um, obviously, those uh, the Bioshock Infinite uh, uh, covers, I guess. Yeah, those were really good. Yeah. Um, I can't believe Zelda is not on this list. I know, me too. It was it was talked about. It was talked about. Yeah, but that's it. That, it was yeah. better than <laughs> everything. everything on this list. <laughs> I think that's your winner. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, but also Starbound yep. is the one I listened to the most outside of the game. Uh, I think my my winner for that was Rogue Legacy. I kept going back to that soundtrack. I, uh, and oh, with the Starbound one, I don't, it's uh, it. I don't think it'll get a fair shake because I, I don't think a lot like a lot of the songs maybe uh, people didn't even hear in the game. It's such good um, ambient music. Yeah, yeah, but like the the soundtrack for so when you like yeah. you pre-order the game or whatever, you got like a download of the soundtrack several months before it came out, and I had been listening to it for a while, and it's very it's a huge track list, hmm. and some of them I haven't heard in the game yet, but are just Really, really good. Yeah, and that one was definitely high on my list. But yeah, it was Zelda for me. But Tiny Barbarian, that opening theme, man, it's good. Woo. It's really good for sure. Congratulations, yeah, Jeff absolutely. Ball. I'll be looking for more of his stuff. So, indie developer of the year, actually kind of contentious. Um, our finalists were the, the Fulbright Company for Gone Home. Mm-hmm. Vlambeer for Nuclear Throne, Ridiculous Fishing, and I was also propping them up just for some of their, um, some of their industry work. Just they're kind of, like they're kind of in the forefront of a lot of any development conversations. Uh, but our winner was Suspicious Developments uh, for Gunpoint. That was the best indie development story I thought. Yeah, for sure. That's really impressive. I this one I thought you guys chose correctly. Cool, nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. I mean, I love Gone Home, but. Those the people who made that had a lot of experience in sure. um, game development before. And yeah, I didn't realize that the, was the, what that was the uh, the Bioshock Two Minerva's Den. Some of those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I think, yeah, the, the dude that made Gunpoint, just overall package is just incredible. Um, what else stood out? Main Cellar Door games for Rogue Legacy, yeah. and they also, they they are from the famous Don't Shoot Your Pants game. Um, so Big fan of that one. Yeah. And... Yeah, I I was really pushing hard for Vlambeer. I just was really impressed with them. But um, well, so what? What about it? Is it because you felt bad for Vlambeer? Because I think that no, no, it was like felt pity. No, it was around the the whole any developers siding with Sony and Microsoft and like just kind of how they handled Microsoft. Like uh, at first, really wasn't going to support the self publishing on the platform, and then when they changed. They changed direction there. They drew up some sort of shady contracts that basically said you you have to be you can't be exclusive to another platform, and they kind of called them out for that while announcing that Nuclear Throne will come to PlayStation Four first. And just um, there aren't there's not a lot of guys that a lot of developers that can actually fight for the indie developers, and um, especially how they're positioned on some of the new platforms. And I think. Uh, vlambeer has got a they've got a pretty loud voice out there uh that that continued to be in the news and i just thought like i they need indie development needs some more champions and not just some of the and this not some of the traditional ones that we've had um that we already know about that like you know that we're in the indie game the movie that type of thing so anyway all right that's where i was coming from anyway Story. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. Uh, did I not move it ahead? What happened here? All oh, right. Might have messed up the graphic there, but story of the year. This was. This is a big one. Uh, best overall story. Finalists are Gone Home, Bioshock Infinite, and The Last of Us is the winner here. What are your guys' thoughts? I don't have a problem with this at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's. It. That's... Yeah. You guys got it on this one. Okay. <laughs> and I think on here, Tom, got it in the order on there correctly. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I would say that too. Yeah. It's worth noting that we didn't really order the finalists, but interesting. Um, I think Gone Home's story is important and its storytelling techniques. Just yeah. the pacing of that game was f- fucking brilliant. And then just the moments are Bioshock for sure. But Last of Us just. Man, like I, I, I kind of wrote about it a little bit. Like the. There are so many standout moments. And the Last of Us, but the the cohesiveness between those moments to bring everything back together. That's where that's where Na- Naughty Dog was always good at standout moments in Uncharted. But their their overall story sometimes uh, fell apart a little bit. And uh, but the Last of Us just it got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then it, and then that ending just the thing most worth talking about, honestly. So, but I I felt like Bioshock had. Um, these crazy, the, you know, it had um, a lot of moments that made you think a lot. Yeah. You know, it, it had it had this like that craziness going on, and you know, this the, the, I don't want to spoil. It's hard to I catch myself tr- spoiling things right before I say. It. Um, Last of Us, like you said, better at a f- like fleshing out the full arc of the characters. They mm-hmm. both have a male and a female going on a journey. Mm-hmm. That has uh, relationships that are kind of similar in some ways, and uh, so when I when I look at it, to me, you know, it's all about the, that pair in each game. Yeah, Last of Us does a better job of that. Bioshock oh. though does some really cool things with other aspects of the. Yeah, it's a, it almost story. it almost lost points because its ambition got in the way of telling a clear story. Like I said, the. Like when you're just focused on just the story, the cohesiveness and the clarity of The Last of Us and the impact of it. Um, like Bioshock, like I really enjoyed when I went back and read what actually happened after I played it because I didn't know what happened. <laughs> like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lost a couple of points there, but but well, these... and, and I think that could be interesting. Like when you have to when you think a little sure. more about something after you experience yeah, sure. that. That's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. Right. Although I don't think Bioshock necessarily holds up. Under that scrutiny, at, yeah. in all aspects. That's the whole when you get into the time travel types, like when everything Some breaks down. Little, but, you know, yeah. There, there were moments where you go, "Wow, that was that." But you have to think, like, was that really interesting, or was it just confusing? And, and uh, <laughs> lots of things straddled the line. You're right, for sure. But, but it was impressive. That uh, was, you know, 
Kindlevine penned a hell of a story there, and it's tough. Those are those are all three really good. I think, and honestly, Gone Home too. Yeah. Um, was if it had won, I wouldn't have complained. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you see the arguments <laughs> that, for all three. Wow, what a you know the way the story was told and the story itself and how, but it you know how like how do you? It's it's so weird to, that we would compare a story like Gone Homes to this That's crazy. Good. You know the craziness of this apocalyptic world of the last <laughs> or Bioshock's crazy sci-fi, and then here's a game about you know a, a girl's journey through adolescence and finding herself, and and, yeah. and, and that she isn't even doesn't even appear yeah. in the game. <laughs> like the, the you know like who's st- it's not your the player that you like are uh, embodying there. The story isn't about her. She didn't. I mean, it is. Oh, she's involved, involved but. The sister, she didn't end up getting any votes, but she did have a nomination for best new character too. Like it was just, it was, it, it's weird. You never, you're just reading about these people, but they still become characters. So that was, yeah, that was like I said, gone home. Really- gone home is important for all of those reasons. So um, yeah. down to our final three. Um, <laughs> I'll be curious to see how we continue to refine these. But uh, we've done digital, downloadable only games for a while. This year, our breakdown was downloadable game of the year below $10. So that was our <laughs> breaking point. Um, to try to split these up, just because you you deal with different sizes of teams and different categories and want to, uh, you know, g- give give some nominations to some games that really deserve it. Uh, for below $10, our nominees are, or our finalists were Papers, Please, Tiny Barbarian DX, and the winner was Gunpoint. We've said quite a bit about all these games, so... Mm-hmm. Um, was there any? Let's look at the, the nominees. Was there anything else you'd swap in? I think these three are pretty pretty solid, actually. What? What? Jo- okay, what, okay. What were you thinking? Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, and then the above ten dollars are. This one was a little. This was the range of games available for this are um, quite broad. But um, our finalists were Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. Call of War as Gunslinger, and the winner was Rogue Legacy. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, I can see Gone Home being on there for yep. sure. Yeah. Um, even Valda's story too. Mm-hmm. But yep. that's, I mean, I didn't play Call of War as, but the other two are definitely. Call yeah. yeah, I was. Coop and I were kind of the champions of War as that game was just so tight, <laughs> like that. Uh, there was nothing I would change about it. it really stuck with me. My. My list would have been Brothers, Rogue Legacy, Gone Home. Fair enough. And, yeah, me too. And, but number one, uh-huh. don't make me choose. Uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, make me choose against my children. Yeah. No, yeah. that's. I'm glad that I didn't have to. <laughs> but I think Gone Home over Call of War. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. yeah Call of War, me, yeah. Me too. I understand. I understand. Like, it's, it's hard to pitch Gunslinger to somebody that hasn't played it and... It doesn't look like it's doing that many unique things, but um, st- it stuck with me. And um, like I said, it was the story and some of the gameplay features that gone home that stuck with me, which is why I um, elevated it over Gone Home. But Gone Home definitely belongs right in that category as well. So, game of the year. Here we go. Final one. We've got. Uh, we actually narrowed this down to five games, and in no particular order, the finalists. Are Bioshock Infinite, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, Rogue Legacy, and Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, with our overall game of the year going to The Last of Us. Um, as far as the overall, well, actually, we'll come back to that. Let's, as far as the finalists, what would what, what do you what do you guys think of this list? I think I would probably just change out Rogue Legacy for Gone Home. Okay. Uh, I love I love Rogue Legacy. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I didn't realize you were putting okay. Brothers above Gone Home. Interesting. No, well, I, I put Brothers Above Rogue Legacy. Uh, okay. But Gone Home would uh, okay. Gone Home was higher higher on my personal list than sure. Brothers. What's your What's your take, Josh? I think The Last of Us was the best game of the year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, I think Zelda deserves to be on the list. Okay. Uh, I think Bioshock needs to be on the list. But I don't think it's better than. Uh, you know what? I, 
I, I went I went so around and around with this stuff, and I think and Brothers was really that was really great. But um, man, Gone Home, mm-hmm. that might be my number two. All right, I'm gonna say my number two is Gone Home. It's Last of Us, then Gone Home. Gotcha. And I think it's I thought about it a lot, and I it's kind of crazy. And I think <laughs> which and I'm gonna make a case right now. And I think with Brothers and Rogue Legacy, the Rogue Legacy is great too. And I think there's you know room for like six games or whatever on this <laughs> best game. Should we have done if, ten? If we had a stamp. <laughs> yeah. If we had like medals to give out, I would say make six of them. But um, I think I'm going to make an argument here mm-hmm. for next year dumping downloadable categories yeah. and indie whatever and because this year blurred the lines sure. like no other. And th- I think we could finally to this year we got to where we thought we were going to be mm-hmm. where we had you know as far as like analyzing games critically or whatever that yeah. you could now you don't have to say well this game's got a real leg up on this other one and mm-hmm. um like in what category <laughs> story not necessarily <laughs> right. uh you can say gra- technical and imp- like technically impressive graphics but you can't say art like best looking game because last year that was an indie game right, right? we gave that mm-hmm. too and interesting that is, yeah i, I think, I think that, we have a lot of a lot of like i want to narrow down the list from our our forties, a little bloated, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I think we can get it down to twenty twenty five. But but I think we're st- still accomplishing what we want to do is give give um, some attention to some of those uh, some of those games that just had excellent features, but maybe didn't have the the overall experience, but uh, still stood out to us. But yeah, I think you're right. With there still might be room for the there's still a Maybe it's just the indie developer category. Maybe you just limit to that, but and get rid of the downloadable stuff. But I would still like a smaller game category and an overall game category, just in case. Uh, but maybe we solve that by by nominating ten games for game of the year, because those games are going to break in no matter what for for game of the year. I still, you know, I don't know if we're at the point where a Rogue Legacy and a Gunpoint compete against Last of Us directly, but but maybe maybe that's just. Well, it's just the story about. Well, I think. Um, well, I'll let you guys speak for yourselves, but for me, game of the year, uh, the the biggest number one criteria for me as mm-hmm. a gamer is story. Mm-hmm. Therefore, my top games are also. I'm my realizing top that from making selection. lists recently. Yeah, that's that's for me too. It yeah, usually, for like. Quite a while. I'll usually like in my top five mix in a two two of those games that I just had a lot of fun with. Mm-hmm. And like are the core reasons I started gaming and I, and but when it when I come down to critically analyzing that game against a a game that is fun to play and has story, I'll usually give the nod to the one with the drama. So I, at least that's that's what I've noticed in the last couple of years. So that is in, that's interesting. But like Zelda is on the list for me because Zelda is like like I was saying, I don't know how else to best say game. it, but it's. <laughs> You know, it's I could say it's the best video game, mm-hmm. you know, in right. a traditional yeah. sense. But you know, the the these other things are, you know, their art pieces or their whatever their creations that happen to be um, the most uh, uh, amazing achievements in, you know, in their particular cool. medium. Sure. So, cool. It's it's just weird that how, you know, I could list my six best games, three of them. Cost me under ten bucks. You know, and, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, or whatever, and that's. I know. E- that's, e- Ethan was saying he's ready. He thinks the bubble's gonna burst in twenty fourteen. I couldn't be more excited because the smaller games are getting better and better and competing better and better. I still mm-hmm. think, you know, with this new consoles, we're still gonna be a, see a, a big push of big games for a, a while here. So I am, I'm excited. I'm most excited about the games of twenty fourteen that I don't even know about yet. So, um, in twenty thirteen. Like I, each year that yeah, like you said, those lines get blurred and the competition becomes tighter between the big boys and the little ones. And um, you know, I didn't know a damn thing about Rogue Legacy or Brothers or Gunpoint, um, and feared their worst for the new Zelda game. Yet to see that, see those three games alongside the two heavy hitters that we knew coming into the year uh, is pretty mm-hmm. awesome. And then I don't know, just for the Last of Us to just constantly floor me and. Um, I kept coming back to, and there was a point where I thought I hated playing that game. Like, I thought I hated the action. Um, but I started to realize I hated it because I wanted to protect these two characters. 
I cared I cared about them so much I didn't I didn't want to fuck up the game and I just didn't want to see them have to I just wanted them to get through okay not go through another fight scene but when I was actually in the action I still really I still really like the gameplay of the last of us as well so um, and then it just the the gut punches combined with with the most human ending I've ever experienced in the game um, is just is phenomenal and it was a kind of the runaway winner for me I, I would have it's weird uh, I think we had conversations throughout the year about whether or not the the gameplay was going to drag down The Last of Us and, the Bi- and Bioshock Infinite mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they both weren't doing anything different with right. their combat but the other parts of those games were so good yeah yeah. And you go like, man, or that is that mm, like there were plenty of people out there, um, journalists and whatnot that that didn't like both either of those games, like one or the other, because of that combat because mm-hmm. they really just thought it was terrible, and so therefore you know like some people had you know gone home at the top of their list mm-hmm. because of, because of that. But um, you know like if you thought if you had experienced The Last of Us um, story as like the Walking Dead's gameplay or something like yeah. that, you know, would it be at the top of your list? I think that's interesting to think about that, that, you know, I thought like Last of Us Combat was fine mm-hmm. because I'm okay with that kind of game, but I it was never at any point like really blow me away. Sure. But I also didn't like the Walking Dead because I didn't interact enough and, and that, you know, like what does that mean to me? Like, so I, I obviously expect something there, but I don't, I don't know. It's weird. And, and I, you know, Gone Home was great. I didn't care that I didn't shoot a gun in that yeah. game. I just uh, wanted it to also find wasn't the sweeping ep- like the characters in the game weren't doing things that you wish you were involved in because they looked fun. Mm. You know, or what? I don't know. Is this? I mean, in, more, in, more, in that game, more brought up like feelings of how we felt in high school. Like, yeah, we can kind of relate to that character. Yeah. You know, it's not like we want to be that character, but we can relate to what she was going. I was just even beyond that. I was. I was. With Gone Home, it was the the pacing of that story and how well it progressed, like, between everything you're finding to trigger the next story moment. Like, it was just, it was so well designed on top of that story. Like, the story was instantly relatable and memorable, but, but there have been games like that, like, especially games that have anything to do with, you know, essentially finding items that trigger audio logs, which kind of, at its bare bones, is what that game is. You can throw off the pacing so easily if you have confusing level design, but it just I just I just went through it at a a, a really good clip that made sense and, and it just kept my interest the entire way and that is that is an amazing feat. So yeah, snoop, snooping through a um, <laughs> you know a, a, this house that was like frozen in time. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know that was that made what you're talking about just the the hunt item hunt was a little a little more fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and and also, and I don't think we've talked about it, but that there was a constant sense that that game was going to turn into a ghost story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, that was intentional. You had to mm-hmm. think because there were, you know, when you go into that living room and you find the little couch fort built, and <laughs> there was, uh, you know, the like they're watching scary movies and they had like the little paranormal, you know, a book. The Ouija board. Find the Ouija board. Like, yeah, Ouija or board. Even when the breaks when you're going through the super <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. Kept expecting this, or you know, yep. yeah, and, and that was brilliant because it kept it, it kept the game from just yeah being the audio logs. You're right that that's a that was a a feature a, a feature that would kept driving you to that next thing to see what else would happen, even if you weren't into the story. I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah, yeah, and I was so pleasantly surprised when it turned out to be something else. Like yeah. that was that was really great. That was it was a great experience. And yeah. cool. I don't know, man. I've, I I I look forward to m- more. Like new ways to experience good stories in video games, mm-hmm. and and I hope that we get kind of more of both of those things. You know, like surprise me some, mm-hmm. and then you know, yeah, I want the big, I want the summer tentpole kind of stuff. Yep. You know, I like that. I like, it's just my, it's the same taste in movies. You know, mm-hmm. I love I like indie films or you know like you know like the sweet little story kind of things, and I like to go see you know the Avengers and yeah, whatever yeah. big sci-fi. You know, crap. Like that's great. Cool. Well, gentlemen, thanks for joining me on the re- recap. It was fun to talk through this stuff. Um, 
and uh, that's going to pretty much do. I think I think now that we're in mid-January, we can call a close on 2013 for HorrorCon.com. <laughs> so, Good year. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. Um, we'll see you again on the site real soon. Thanks, everybody.